For January 20th, 2017, we talk about the Nintendo Switch announcements, Doom, and we do a free play multiplayer. Welcome to level 181. My name is Cole Ross. I'm Dennis Furia. I'm Jella Prendes. I'm Ben Merkel. And you are listening to The Level. It's a podcast for people who love video games. I'm sitting here. I'm drinking a cocktail. They were out of my normal uh, diet ginger ale that I get. So I have mm-hmm. regular Werner's and it is a very, it is a very strange mix. That particular, that particular flavor with the bourbon that I have in there. So we'll see if I, if, if, if this burns clean or if this ends up being a fucking mess. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> I, I propose someone, um, uh, Michael Prenn, uh, oh, yeah. posted a, a bourbon based cocktail, uh, to the levels page because it was called the hearthstone, which, you know, makes me very happy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, but it was bourbon, sweet vermouth, um, and then Benedictine, which I, I've not heard of before. Um, like, 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 the, like the monk? Yeah, like it's named after the monk. I, I looked into <laughs> it. But funny enough, the Wikipedia page about it did not have anything on how it actually tastes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I like read it and I was like, well, I know a lot about the monk now, but that wasn't helpful. So <laughs> I have a feeling like the, the fan of it was like a fan of the monk that wrote the page out of obligation to completeness, completeness to Benedict, Benedictine's, um, yeah. you know, story. So he could he could make sure he's linking out to all the right places. Yeah, to just roll um, it. Yeah, <laughs> but orange bitters and then an orange twist, hmm. um, and it sounds delicious. So, uh, if I can get my hands on some Benedictine, I might uh, might just, uh, try it. You just have to go to a uh, go to party source and do not be afraid to ask for help. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they, I mean, they have so many people. I feel like every aisle has a, a, a party source person in it. Mm, yeah, and this is well, somebody uh, somebody walking around with a scanner. Exactly, hovering and, and a waiting look on for you. Face. <laughs> it is that is truly like if you like alcohol in any measure that is truly a mecca for you i've yeah. i've not seen anything like it before or since yeah. we've talked about it on the on the show in the past it's a it is a walmart sized building that is full of pretty much nothing but liquor and party supplies and by party mm-hmm. supplies i mean either uh paper plates <laughs> by, uh, maybe, by party supplies i mean liquor yeah li- <laughs> uh, it's, it's it's liquor and liquor accessories um so it really is um, kind of a, a fantastic place, and you've got those sweet, sweet Kentucky tax rates. So, <laughs> c- can we do a fun party source aside? Yes. The guy who owned Party Source uh, wanted to make a distillery next door to it, so he sold the company to his employees mm-hmm. since he was pretty confident that he wouldn't find a bank that would give him a loan. Mm-hmm. And so he took took the money that he made selling it to his employees to build a distillery in the parking lot. Yeah, and he's just making his own type of distillery now. Yeah, so. it's uh, it's there. It's <laughs> it's it's up and running. You can see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, new riff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Speaking well, of go ahead. Speaking of alcohol and things, I happen to be drinking a Santo beer from St. Arnold, which is a brewery here in Houston, and I'm drinking it in my goddamn marathon finisher mug. Yeah, yeah. It, is, it, it is your it is your victory chalice. Yeah, mm-hmm. tankard. Thing. You weren't kidding so. about the chalice thing. Jala sent a picture of this, um, and my God, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, it's 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 this it, mug it's, looks more like a club than anything else. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's large enough to house a, a family of ponies. Yeah, you kind of have to <laughs> chase the ponies out of it before you fill it up. Otherwise, you just get pony water. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, it, anyway. it's about three quarters of the way full in your picture, Jala, and I imagine that took three beers. So. <laughs> <laughs> well also um ben if you ever happen to be over in houston for some damn reason we should go take a uh, tour of the brewery i've been told it's very cool but i've never actually been in there so okay i will keep that in mind if i yeah. ever go to houston I keep, yeah I, for I, any <laughs> reason <laughs> I, I i always forget that we have like this very strong texas component to the to, to, to the show and and kind of the network i do now. as well yeah <laughs> It's just, and it is something in my, in my head, I've got this kind of mixed up because I am, I'm taking all of the orders we've ever, we've ever gotten on the duck feed store and all of our Patreon, Patreon addresses. I've got a, a bulletin board with a map over it. And I just want to get a sense of kind of our reach and where we're, where we're popular. And I want to have that in a tax all way. Um, and I had, I just put a shitload of stuff in Texas earlier today. Hmm. So 
Yoo-hoo! Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Texas is a well, great seeing... place for shitloads of stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, I'm going to be seeing a bunch of people um, at PAX South. It's going to be um, um, next week. Yeah. Oh, cool. yeah. Well, Yay. So it's a week from, yeah, a week from when this comes out, correct? Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. I will not be there on that Friday, but I will be there on the Saturday and the Sunday. So nice. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I think that uh, unless anybody has any other stuff they want to put in, Jolly, it sounds like I cut you off, but I know you're going to talk about more in the uh, in the grind section. No, oh, um, no, you weren't cutting me off. I was okay. done for now. <laughs> yeah, you all have inspired <laughs> me. I need to do like I I, I want to I want to go get a drink in my hand now. So mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna I should have done that before I came. But yeah, I'm gonna we, I'm gonna I'll... transition. I'm gonna grab a, a drink. <laughs> okay, well, you know uh, what? damn it, I'm gonna make it a cocktail. Okay, well, well one <laughs> one moment here. Uh, we've got the usual kind of uh, show for you. The brief, the multiplayer, and the grind. And we're going to get started with... The brief. The brief, where we talk about things that are happening in the world of video games around us. Um, so this is the news section, and I, I think we'd be remiss. It's so awkward, right, w- when we record this show, because we record it on a Tuesday, it comes out on a Friday, like that just ends up being the way that it works out for us. Um, mm-hmm. And that sometimes means that we miss, you know, large swaths of news. And so I'm going to kind of insert myself into the beginning of this. Normally, I ask if anybody else wants to go first, but I, I think we'd, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the about the Switch announcement. Okay. Oh sure, yeah, yeah, right. Because mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> it was it, like it was uh, earlier today, and I was thinking, what are we going to talk about? And then I realized there's that whole big thing that happened that we need that that we need to mention. So, for anybody who's listening in the future, or somebody who doesn't who doesn't know quite what we're talking about, um, we've known that the NX Nintendo Switch uh, is kind of a hybrid hybrid tablet slash console portable kind of thing. And that's pretty much about it. And here, this past week or so, we got uh, a lot more information, including a launch date, a, a price, um, a couple of games uh, that are that are going to be bound for it, um, and uh, some more kind of uh, kind of hardware information. So, did any of you watch that announcement as it went on, or have you have you read any any of the stuff, um, any of the pertinent information after the fact? Uh, I've read some of the stuff after the fact, but I did not watch the launch. Anybody else? Yeah, I'll I'll put myself in that same bucket. Kind mm-hmm. of curiously grazed the articles, but I think when the announcement uh, went on, I was doing family stuff, so I was just like, mm. meh. Yeah, it was also like at 11 p.m. on a Sunday night or something like yeah. that. <laughs> Jolly? <laughs> Marathon? Mar- oh yeah, marathon. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, time time is weird. Um, so I watched the I watched the announcement live. Um, and I'm pretty excited about this, about this thing. Uh, there's an awful lot of kind of, uh, like, like, like snark and easy jokes going on about it. And I think that there are definitely things that are uh, kind of eh, about the overall, about the overall details, but like, as it stands, I've kind of learned not to bet against Nintendo and they've been kind of impervious to a lot of the, to a lot of kind of the, eh, about these things so uh <laughs> here's here's kind of the the the, the vital information uh it is uh, going to be uh 300 bucks 299 um and it's coming out on march the 3rd which is like tomorrow like we yeah. we basically just have just have february and oh i hope that you are not you know as you're hearing this thinking hey i should probably go pre-order that because you can't they're all gone <laughs> um uh-huh. which is which is bad for me because i wanted to pre-order one of these bad boys um so bleh um, Even I was considering it, but by the time I woke up that day, <laughs> like, sorry, oh well. <laughs> yep, well, shit, I guess I'm just going to have to, like, I'll, I'll just do what I usually do and, like, walk into a Target and then just see. Like, I'll go into a Target at 8 a.m., <laughs> hope they got a shipment, and then we're just going to roll with it. Um, but um, uh, it's going to be launching with Breath of the Wild, the uh, the, the, the the new Zelda game. Uh, it's going to be like a six-inch uh, t- uh, capacitive touchscreen on it, so similar to a, mm-hmm. to, to a Vita, um, with these little things called Joy-Cons that slide into the side of it and also have a lot of motion control kind of stuff. Um, the, the other big piece of software that they announced was, uh, oh gosh, Super Mario Odyssey which has Mario coming into our world and standing next to, uh, <laughs> standing next to real ass people. 
Yeah, um, this yeah. was the story that I wanted to talk about specifically. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fun, but it's it's a little weird. Did they? It did looks they like Grand Theft Mario. <laughs> Grand, also, somebody <laughs> so somebody modded Mario into Grand Theft Auto Five on PC as a response Correct. to this. Yeah, uh, I, the video I saw was Grand Theft Auto Four, but mm, yes, no. Um, and it looked awesome. He was bowling. He ate at Burger Shot, and then immediately <laughs> went to the bathroom afterwards. <laughs> I don't need to think about pissing Mario. <laughs> You're Wasn't that s- Super Mario Sunshine? I mean, it's pretty similar. Like this is in <laughs> it is in the line. Like this is this is a new quote unquote mainline console Mario. Uh, you know that follows kind of a kind of a direct line from sixty four and Sunshine. So yeah, yeah. So all the like trailer stuff where it looks you know like they show the scenes where it looks like he's in New York City essentially, mm-hmm. um, or you know like a cartoony version of that. Like so, that looked really weird. I saw the trailer for it earlier today, and that looked a little bit different. Where it actually showed the different like worlds he travels to. Yeah, so it, it looks like maybe that New York City type thing might be a hub, or even just a single like place he visits. And but there's a lot more to it than that. Yeah, it's like a single um, like a single biome or something like that, or a single or a, a single kind of stage because there's a lot more kind of tra- traditional Mario in- imagery and also some more kind of fantastical galaxy kind of things. Yeah, yeah. It makes me think like they're like, what world have we not done yet for Mario? Like, what is left? <laughs> I know the real world. Yeah, it's like uh, uh, they but... did that in the movie, and that did not turn out well. <laughs> but, the, but the but but the gameplay in this thing looks baller AF. Like it's pr- it looks really fun. <laughs> you have the boomerang hat that you can jump on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was pretty yeah. badass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're just uh, rolling around with temporary platforms like your Mega Man. Yeah. Bowser is dressed like a white suited pimp for some reason. <laughs> it's gangster Bowser. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. Like this, this looks really cool. Even the, uh, the kind of sports friends kind of thing that like the jazz joust, like a uh, one, two, one, two snap or something like that. Whatever it is where, uh, one, two switch, one, two switch. Yeah. Where, uh, where, where you're doing like, how do you the, mess that one up, dude? Uh, I don't know. Because they were snapping all the time. Like their, their sonic branding nice. was on point during that presentation. Whenever switch was mentioned, <laughs> they would do the little like, like, <laughs> It was so weird and quirky. Um, and I mean that in a good way, not in like a sarcastic internet way. Uh, <laughs> but they, um, but that once you switch thing, um, you know, it looks pretty slight. Like, I don't know if that's like a $60 game or whatever, but like as a, as a weird little proof of concept for this, for this Joy-Con kind of thing, like that looks pretty great to me, actually. Like I want more, you know, I want them to play around with having this screenless game, you know? Yeah, it, it, you mentioned uh, sports friends, and uh, specifically within that, Johann Sebastian Joust. Yeah, um, is the is the game that does that, and I, mm-hmm. I I really like that idea. It's I I love the fact that Nintendo has just been like, "Fuck y'all, we are not doing a normal controller ever again." Nope, we're done. And like people yeah, got was... real salty about that. Like they were they were complaining, like, "Oh, I thought this was going to be a return to form. What are they doing?" It's like they can't compete. You know that. Like, if they tried to play the same game as everybody else, they wouldn't be able to stand up to it. They have to. They have to differentiate. That's been their. That's been their path this whole time. Like, yeah. you know, if they can capture one third of what the Wii got them with this, that's going to be a big deal. You know, well, that, and that's what it is. Is they they only you know they only need to have something as successful successful as the Wii every like four console generations to be <laughs> perfectly fine. Yeah. So it's it's like poker where like even even a twenty percent you know chance of success means that you bet that bet like there's no tomorrow. Yeah. Um yeah. so you know here it's the, like just swing for the moon every time. It's it's the Madden approach, you know, mm-hmm. just throw the Hail Mary every time. Yeah. As long as you're playing on the right <laughs> difficulty setting. Don't don't get it twisted though. This is not as easily understandable as the Wii was. Like it's complicated to explain like like mm-hmm. what the switch is so like wait it's a it's a game boy but then i put it into a dock and it goes on the tv like what are you like this is i'm, I'm gonna say adventurous and don't like read in like a positive connotation on that like <laughs> this is bizarre what they're what, what, what they're trying to do and like i'm down for it i'm along for the ride i want nintendo to be weird because if i if i if i'm looking for just tight and like high-end game i have a fucking pc or I have a yeah. PS4. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. I don't know. I, I, like I, I don't think that I'm coming at this from a like like from a a fanboy point of view because I'm not coming out and saying, hey, this is the only machine that's going to let me play, you know, Mario and Zelda and all that. Like that's kind of taken as red. 
but like i just want i want them to even have just like a playground for themselves even if as it always will the third party support is going to fall through yeah of course well i think this this is the smallest launch lineup yet in the way that we're going um it, it's going to wind up there will just be a new mario and zelda game every year mm -hmm. um with a new console attached to it <laughs> but like it's a small launch but can you call a launch with a zelda game a weak launch yeah they're they're counting on the fact that 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 will not be the case i i have a question for you guys at the very end of the mario or super mario odyssey trailer um mm -hmm. the hat sprouts eyes mm -hmm. and that's actually in the logo yeah are they gonna go some like it's been sentient this whole time just couldn't <laughs> think of anything to say it, <laughs> and it got awkward so i figured it better stay silent be like, fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very curious as to what direction they're gonna go with that i have no idea i don't know like i imagine it's going to be your your navi uh character yeah, that's that's what I was going to say. It's probably going to be like your Navi. Yeah. So. And it looks exactly like the Pokedex from uh, from Pokemon Sun and Moon <laughs> with its big eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm intrigued. I, I don't... I was... Before the Wii U launched, I was more likely to buy a Wii U than now with the Switch. Right. And I think, I think that's a weird place to be because I feel like the Switch has more promise... Than the Wii U. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, but like I just, it's been in, a it's okay. been a pretty eventful three years. I didn't mean to cut you off, but like circumstances have changed. You know, like you have a gaming sure. PC now. Like you, like yeah. there's plenty. <laughs> it's it's not like mm -hmm. you're at a you're at a loss for like cool unique stuff to play. You know, and neither am I. Neither is anybody else. For you know, um, for for that matter. Sorry, go go yeah. ahead and say what you're going to say. I'm, I'm a dick. I cut you off. No, no, you're fine. And it, it was kind of headed in that direction where just I, I feel like I, yeah, I, when I was, you know, when I had nothing, when I was starting from a blank slate, mm -hmm. um, I could, I could maybe justify like, oh, maybe I'll go with you and just kind of zag. Mm -hmm. uh, now that I feel like, you know, I'm a little more established. And like you said, there's all this high end stuff in my living room to play on. Yeah. I, I, for some reason, feel less likely to want the quirky, you know, off the wall thing. And I, I'd have, I have to think about that a little more to, to get to yeah. exactly why that is. But yeah. Yeah, the the re one of the reasons that I'm excited is the 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 fact that the PS4 Pro or the or the Microsoft Scorpio or whatever the Xbox One Scorpio, like those you know half step iterations on a console cycle, they they don't do anything for me. Yeah, they, they could Nintendo could have released like a bag of wet socks as their next console, <laughs> and it still would not have been as dumb as but, the PS4 but, Pro but, and Microsoft but, Scorpio. But they're not. They're releasing a piece of plastic that can determine whether or not you threw rock, paper, or scissors. And that's great. Yeah. <laughs> Compared to a bag of wet socks, it's fantastic. <laughs> well, I think you misunderstand me, Dennis. I genuinely think that's pretty great. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I follow you. I, I would not fault anyone for being excited. I'm like, Nintendo has to figure their third party shit out, though. Like, it's, you know, generations this way, and they. Well, I I'm, I find myself about to say they can't keep on doing that, but they seem to be doing all right. Per my previous statement, on you know they only need one of these to go big mm -hmm. every four console cycles, and they're fine. So I I don't know. I just you know for for the goodwill of gamers to persist, you're you're, you're getting into generationally, you're getting to into a segment of of gamers that you know didn't grow up with the incredible Nintendo nostalgia. Mm -hmm. uh, that we did and so you know that at some point that's got to be a finite resource right so this is this is revealing the fact that i don't interact with anybody who is under the age of 27 but i mm -hmm. think that nintendo is a little bit like disney in that they constantly remanufacture their own nostalgia i would be very i'd be willing to believe that there are people who have nintendo nintendo nostalgia even if they grew up with the gamecube or later well, in God, I guess we're getting to the point where people who were kids when the Wii came out are, are old enough to buy their own console system. So yeah. Nintendo's going to do just fine. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Like, I don't want to take the whole episode with this. Is is there anything else that people wanted to throw on top of it? Like, I have two concerns that I'll just kind of put out here. Um, battery life is always going to be a thing. Like, I don't see this being something that I take out of the house regardless of what their trailers and commercials say. So whatever, I'll just mm -hmm. dock it at the end of the night or, you know, more likely fall asleep with it on my chest and then put it on the dock before I go, um, go to work the next day. 
Um, do you uh, do you travel with like a 3ds or a Vita or anything? No, not really. Like when I so okay. so what is what do you consider travel? It's not in my like everyday carry, so I don't take my Vita uh, to work. But like when I go no, no. when I go home to Mansfield, I pretty much always have either my Vita or my uh, my 3ds in my backpack. Yeah, I'd say that's the kind. Any anytime you're spending a significant amount of time on transit that you are not driving, yeah, uh, I'd consider it tra- a travel. Which but if you know, if you live in a city, it could be your commute to work every yeah. day. But but it charges on on USB C, so you would just throw one of those cords into your bag and then just roll with it. You know? Oh sure. Like there's there, there's also that to consider. It, it is not just it doesn't just charge on the dock. The other thing is uh, storage size. It comes with 32 gigs internal, which is fucking pathetic. Um, yeah, they said the the new Zelda game alone will take up half the memory. Yeah, but you, you know, <laughs> oh, I, Lord. I think that it has external storage on it. Like you can put in a put in a a, a high capacity like micro SD card or something like that. So, uh, whatever, another thirty dollars on top of the cost. Oh well. Mm-hmm. From 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 my perspective, uh, thirty extra dollars is not that much of an inconvenience for somebody else, et cetera, and on down the line. Anybody well, else? Et cetera, have... et cetera, another game, right? <laughs> What's that? For for someone else, that's it's that or another game. Right, right, yeah. It, like, does, does anybody else have any have have any like you know just reactions to that announcement? There's going to be a little bit more information coming on down the line, but I hope I have friends who get it so that I can play with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you that's, go. that's how I do every Nintendo console. Is I wait for somebody who I know well, who gets it and then I play it there. <laughs> well, Pack South, I want to go check out Nintendo's booth there. Oh so. yeah. Yeah, that's a thing, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, so you're gonna we're, we're, we're gonna have feet on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Um. So yeah, sorry I monopolized us with that, but I just wanted to make sure we we addressed it a little bit. Uh, let us cut in, Jolly. You have something that might uh, that, that might relate to this. Um. With, um uh, games. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, GameStop is struggling and slowly dying. And the the reason why I picked an article about this in particular is not because this surprises anybody, because as physical game sales start plummeting down the hole, of course, game stores that sell physical games are not going to be as uh, lucrative of a business. It's basically, uh, once upon a time, I used to work for Borders Books, and you know what happened to that? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, Amazon killed it Uh, so it was pretty much the same situation so it looks like GameStop is dying its slow death and it's trying to uh, diversify its non-gaming business by selling Apple products through its Simply Mac stores prepaid phone plans through Cricket Wireless and you know collectible crap like uh, Pokemon memorabilia and whatnot which you know they've had for a while but they're trying to like up their game on that uh, because their shares are down like 16% in the last 12 months and they're doing, you know, like way worse over overall. And they're kind of hoping to get a boost with the switch, but more or less like, you know, you're not going to be, I, I don't know how much longer they're going to be able to, to yeah, hang I, in, you know, like that's, it, it looks like they're going the way of borders did. Yeah, so. I, w- I would not hold my breath on the switch yeah. bringing them out. Yeah. Oh, I know exactly. Mm-hmm. That's that's, it's kind of like uh, Borders tried to do the whole e-reader thing, like as its last gasp, and then right <laughs> after that, like not too long after that, Borders just went away. Well, yeah, and, and it's it, like, no, nah, nah, you should have gotten in. You should have gotten in on those e-readers a long time ago when BNN was doing that. Yeah. and they did. And you know, there were there were multiple other problems that that company faced. What what in the, what but, in the world uh, was was Borders e-reader? Uh, they didn't even have like their own proprietary e-reader. They just had a bunch of uh, third-party e-readers that they pulled in, and they had this big kiosk that they tried to unload on everybody. <laughs> but they didn't have the whole the whole shtick that like BNN had with their Nook, you know, yeah. where you could read the stuff in the store and and try stuff out and all this other stuff. They didn't have any of those features, and they just couldn't compete to you know um, with BNN's Nook, and they couldn't compete with Amazon and they couldn't compete with half price books or other, you know, used bookstores. So, you know, like they had like a used book uh, online thing that they could, you know, order books through, but it wasn't any, you know, faster or anything than just going down the street to the half price. So yeah. it didn't make, you know, like there was nothing really to save it. And they tried 
you know, doing the same thing, diversifying what they would sell and expanded like this whole kind of Hallmark store type of thing going on. And I don't know. They did all different kinds of stuff trying to like scrabble to save the business and it just did not work. And that's what I'm reading in this article about GameStop. They're doing the same thing. So I'm like, yeah, they're they're probably not going to be around all yeah. that much long. So... So yeah, that, that was it. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's kind of weird. So I'm only concerned about this insofar as like, does this reflect on general sales across the industry? Like, you know, are sales for everybody down? By which I mean the amount of money going to publishers and developers to make new stuff, or is this just does this just reflect GameStop's kind of bad business model of being brick and mortar, mm. appealing only to people's uh. parents? Um, who are probably looking for a better deal anyway, and also just pushing them use sales. According to the article, it was talking about how Target and Best Buy are also suffering from the same problems with selling video games, but those stores sell other items, so the video game losses are not a big deal. But GameStop is dedicated to games, mm -hmm. so you know that's why they are having so many issues. Yeah. So... So, yeah, it's like overall um, physical games stuff is just not selling as much because you can <laughs> download it on your computer or whatever to your console direct. You don't need to, you know, yeah. go get a physical game. So, so cold time to sell all your stocks in, uh, in that place. <laughs> Do you think after working there for eight years and seeing how that company runs, I would ever touch their fucking stock, Ben? I just assumed you were partners <laughs> at the company. <laughs> Oh my gosh! I worked there for eight years and I never rose above game advisor <laughs> because I, I was doing things like going well to school. You. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, oh my gosh, they've spent so much time and money and effort pushing against pushing against publishers and pushing against any kind of like effort toward just like digital distribution. Like if they put half of that into like diversifying their fucking business. And like they've done a little bit of that, like with you know the, just buying other companies like Congregate or ThinkGeek or whatever. That's small, like small potatoes uh, as compared to like fixing their fundamentally outdated business model. And you yeah. know, instead of just saying to Sony like, "Hey, we're not going to stock the PSP Go because you sell things online and we can't," we, we like that doesn't get us any money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's not like a moral failing or anything. Like, it sounds like I'm coming down hard on the company for that. But, like, I don't know. Like, just they, they probably, you know, they, they saw the writing and they decided to try and fix other people as opposed to fix themselves, which is not the, mm -hmm. not the way to go. Whoever was making these yep. decisions realized that they could just stall long enough to get themselves promoted or retired or whatever oh, yeah. and didn't have to worry about actual long-term success. Yeah, yeah. Ach achieve escape velocity out the top into, into, some, into someplace else. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yep. Well, I'll tell you that uh, in, at Borders, they had high turnover rate on their CEOs during the last several years of the business being around. So, mm. you know, that that's exactly that just sounds exactly like what happened to Borders. So mm. and that that made me sad, though, because I like Borders. But yeah, oh well, I mean, like books. <laughs> I don't know. For some reason, bookstores have a lot more goodwill. That may just be me being like prudish and outdated and uh, just a just a fucking snob saying "Ooh, reading is good but games are bad well, which is not the case well, at all. What's, what what's I funny like is a that sense even of nostalgia this... yeah. Oh, go ahead yeah yeah well even to this day uh when i go into a bnn i'm just like the enemy <laughs> mm. <laughs> and it's, it's partially but the thing is is that like bnn's atmosphere like they they have their employees dressed differently borders was way more laid back and you know just kind of like the cool chill place that you go and the, all the employees were great and just any store i went into uh even before i worked there was just awesome so yeah. you know like it was just a different atmosphere than barnes and noble and that's why i was you know man I love... so heartbroken when it went away so Man, I'd love to meet some Walden books. We had one of those in the mall, and I would go yeah. there, and that was, like, the only place that I, that, that carried, like, it was the only place uh, outside of, like, the kind of skeevy comic shop that I didn't want to go to very much. Um, the Walden books uh, carried D&D uh, &D books. So, like, I huh. bought my, like, my, my third edition uh, set stuff at Walden books. You know, that tiny yeah. little cramped, shitty, you know, like, half lot <laughs> half lot store in the Richland mall yeah. in Mansfield, Ohio. Yeah. 
you'll see Walden books got eaten by borders. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep. <laughs> um, um, um. So. so anyway. Yeah. Uh, poor game. Not poor GameStop. I, yes. don't, I don't know. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> oh, the death of an industry. Okay. Yep. Like, the, the physical the physical game industry anyway. Like yeah. The thing is, is that um, the way that the AAA companies are trying to push their physical sales is just by, here, let's have this ultra special collector's edition of, you know, $200 or whatever the hell for all this crap that you want to have sitting on your shelf. And maybe every once in a while there's a game that you really like that, you know, that you know that you're really going to like because it's one in a series and you just want that stuff. But, you know, we had that conversation before about your mm-hmm. tipless daddy and, you know, my <laughs> yeah. um, whatever the hell Skyrim dragon thing that's yeah. sitting on my on my shelf that just kind of sits there. And I was less impressed with Skyrim than other other games in the series. But mm. Mm. Anyway, anyway, moving on. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, Ben, tell me about this uh, this AMA. Uh, well, yeah. So the, my main story is the Mario one, but uh, just as an aside, Gabe Newell did an AMA on uh, Reddit like just a couple hours ago from when we recorded. Um, not a whole lot of information was divulged, and a couple people asked about Half Life Three, and he didn't really say anything. Mm. Um, <laughs> He, I think the only fun details he mentioned is he said his favorite game that Valve's put out has been Portal 2. And his rationale for it was that he didn't have anything to do with, like, the uh, design decisions of it. So he didn't, like, he said that when he looks at Half-Life, it's hard not to look at as a long list of, like, compromises that he had to make to make the game. Which, not that it's, like, necessarily a bad thing, but, like, there's just a lot of, like, tied-up emotion in it. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, that was just a fun link for you guys to look mm-hmm. at though. That wasn't necessarily a news story. But yeah. what do you think what do you think makes someone decide like yes, now is the time? I mean, everybody was everybody <laughs> so all the people who normally whenever Gabe Newell sneezes say, "Oh gosh, Half-Life 3 is coming." Like there were people mm-hmm. saying, "Hey, this is the opening salvo in them getting ready to announce this new thing." Guys, it's not going to happen. Valve is a fucking mess. They're a holacracy. <laughs> like, nobody is anybody's boss. Nothing gets done aside from the things that make them money, which is, you know, optimizing Steam to sell you shit. Give up the dream. It's dead. There's no sense hoping for anything. Buy other stuff. Um, <laughs> it, that said, he did say that they're working on a few single player games, but they just haven't <laughs> announced them yet. Right. <laughs> But yeah, he, that was another thing that he mentioned as well, because a lot of people are asking about CSGO patches, and mm-hmm. he's like, well, people work on what they want to work on here, so there's 20 or 30 people who work on that, but people work where they think that they are most valued or what they enjoy working on the most. Yeah. So, oh, God, that makes me so angry. Um, Why? Because <laughs> oh, it's no. like, I don't think people are going to enjoy working on, like, let's optimize Steam as a program that's probably going to be like, let's work on something interesting. I don't no, know. I mean, that, but that's what they're doing. Like, that, that, that's, where, that's where the majority of their staff are deciding to work on their stuff is optimizing mm-hmm. Steam and working on the, on the sales platform. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, the, 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 it's, it's a holacracy thing that, 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 that makes me upset, which is the whole, hey, we don't have any bosses or goals. We're just going to have people work on what they feel like working on. You know what, you know what I feel like working on? Drinking beer and jerking off. So I'm going to be over here. Yeah. Oh, man. You're going to have to join the conference room for that is over there. There's about 20 people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That on the second floor. Yeah. Uh, just watch your step. Um, yeah. <laughs> Gross. Um, <laughs> I, thought I told you not to bring work home with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And no, I, I don't. I don't have my doubts that there are good intention people there who are trying to make awesome stuff for us to play. But uh, I don't know. Just uh, at the, at this point, it's become its own kind of inward twisted thing. Trying to trying to follow the the development of that game, and just I have no faith it's going to happen. I think companies work like that when they have the right type of people working there, and I. Th- think valve has that situation mm. so yeah. i just want them to make cool stuff that's not fucking dota <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't take dota away from anybody but it's just not my jam yeah um, <laughs> it makes them tons of money and it brings a lot of people joy um <sighs> <laughs> but i don't like it so fuck it <laughs> no I mean, but, but I just, it's, it's very hard for me to get excited about about that being the apparent priority over the past couple of years that they've as they've tried to build that up you know just 
uh, I want them to make stuff that I would like. And no matter how much I can intellectually understand how how advantageous it is for them to, to you know to work on bringing that bringing that bringing that to bear and making it as good as they can make it, like oh, like that makes a ton of people happy. There's always there's always going to be a small dark just ashen cinder at the heart of me that cannot that cannot brook somebody doing something that is not made explicitly for me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh Dennis, round us out uh with a company that actually is making single player um first person shooters with awesome stories. Well uh, yeah, it's so Titanfall two has announced its new mode and it's called Counter Strike. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, shit. When I said that thing I was talking about the main the main campaign of Titanfall two, which apparently is really, really good, and I'm just waiting for it to uh, get to get to a price that I'm comfortable with. But so Counter Strike Live Fire pilot only so it is just people running around shooting each other yeah so like let's let's take the one not the one thing but like the biggest thing about this game like the whole th it's in the name damn it like <laughs> the titans these big giant robots that you can battle with are like what this game is centered around and let's do a mode that just kind of removes that mm -hmm. um and you can only have pilots or soldiers or whatever they call it in counter-strike <laughs> and uh it's you know um i think it's like 5v5 or something like that elimination so no respawning uh best of five rounds and that like you know they they've designed a couple new maps you know just for it and hey like this versus new new content fine but it just, it just struck me as supremely odd that their new mode um eliminates their single biggest differentiator like that just that just seemed weird to me now i i furiously googled and was relieved to see that thankfully there is a titans only mode hmm. so they do not in titanfall have <laughs> a pilots only mode Without a Titans only mode, there is yeah. a Titans only mode. But even even then, like the Titans only mode is like you know you, you, everyone starts in a Titan. Once you're knocked out, you can't get a new Titan, but you can still like play as a as a pilot, um, okay. and and you know, try to help your team. Which yeah. you know that that holds together for me. It just it just feels so weird to be like, yeah, we're gonna start you, you know, we're, we're gonna take what this game is known for, which is giant robots, big arenas, and and these kind of um, multi scale battles. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and we're just going to eliminate an entire half of it so that it, I imagine this is going to play a lot like, um, Counter-Strike because there's, you know, no respawning, like it, they got wall running at least. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, that made me think of, um, what was it? Brink? Oh yeah. Was Brink. It, I forgot about Brink. <laughs> yeah. So, so this is now at best it's Brink. Mm -hmm. um that's and, grim and, yeah. <laughs> it just it, yeah it just seems like a real uh real weird decision um but uh yeah so that's that's coming um it's mm -hmm. again nice to see him putting out free content like i'm, I'm not gonna say that it's just the weirdest possible thing they could have chosen to do for it yeah i mean it's very clear that it is respawn a working toward their strength which is this fast paced human human scale combat. I mean, this is the Call of Duty team after all. And also this is low hanging fruit, especially if a Titans only mode was there before. So like maybe they are satisfying some need that wasn't there before. I'm I have I have no stake in respawn, but you know, so it makes no sense that I would like white knight them. But yeah, it would generally generally they do good stuff, so I should give them that. It, it just strikes me this this strikes me as the final destination, no items mode. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. now, there you go. No you, you, you pandered to my prejudices, so there we go. <laughs> I put this in a language you could hate. <laughs> so it's like a mode that favors skill over luck, then. <laughs> Oh my god! I think I think we've like, entered a neighborhood like... where no productive conversation can happen. <laughs> <laughs> but like for comparison, this this would be like having Overwatch, except none of the characters have unique powers. Mm, yeah. Or you know, I. Pick, it's a, pick, it's Overwatch, but everybody's Soldier seventy six or whatever. It, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, like literally, with, with a little bit of like, wall. So. Mm. Um. So yeah, just a, just interesting. Um. Yeah. But uh, I'd call it out. Yeah. I, I really have no basis to talk about this aside from just what I've what I've heard about. I haven't played the game. I'm curious about the single player. If I got it, I would never play multiplayer anyway. So, um, yeah, yeah, that sounds like a brief to me. It does. Multiplayer. Now it is time for the multiplayer, where we ask you a question, but no, no, uh, a thousand times no. This time it's a free play multiplayer. 
Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> I I, I, gronk, I, I, gronk, gronk. I paused for a second and thought that I had a soundboard right here, but I was actually just tapping on a pen on my desk. <laughs> I thought it was playing an alarm. Um, did I mention I didn't sleep last night? Um, <laughs> yeah. No, just all lay, right, all right. just lay there all night, <laughs> yeah. all night getting pissed. What's that? All night getting pissed? No, just laying in bed. Like, why won't you fucking fall asleep, Ross? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so you uh, refer to yourself by your last name? No, it's just funny. It just it, may, it makes it makes me sound angry when I'm talking about myself. Um, but no, this is a free play multiplayer where we instead have you ask us the questions, um, and these are fresh ones. Uh, don't worry if we don't get to yours; uh, they're going to be banked away for later stuff. Um, I'm going to lead and us. We made good on that promise recently, even though I wasn't on the episode. But I was very proud of us for after. <laughs> Months and months of saying, we're going to catch up on these. We caught up on them. Yeah. So. I, sure. I mean, we didn't awesome. catch up on them. There's plenty of them still. But it's, uh, <laughs> you know, it, like the check is in the mail. Like, like these are being squir- squirreled away. Uh, so Franz asks us, inspired by the question, what is your favorite video game song? This can be a song from a video game, a song about a video game, or just a song that makes you think of a game. All right. Space Oddity, Alan Wake. Mmm, mmm, that's good. Yeah, that is that is a great one. Yeah. Um, see also Angry Johnny. God, Angry. Alan Wake's <laughs> soundtrack is so goddamn good. Uh, <laughs> like, we're just, we're like when the credits roll on chapter two and they just like straight up roll Poe. And they're like, okay, this is made specifically for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to say Sublime's Love is What I Got when it's played at the beginning of, is it it's Saints Row 3? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and you're just driving with your friend, and the entire segment is just about driving with your friend in the car and both belting out that song, and yeah. it is perfect. Strangely enough, the only context in which Sublime is okay, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean okay like qualitatively; I just mean okay as an acceptable. No, I'll, I'll say, I'll say, I'll say on both fronts. Like, I generally I hate Sublime. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. I just, I just have an unreasonable dislike for that band, except for Love Is What I Got, which like you can't not like. So. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so similarly for uh, um, oh gosh, that Bismarcky song, you you got what I need. Uh, in Saints Row Four, they use that as well, mm-hmm. which is uh, which is pretty great. Jolly, you got anything? Um, I would say that I have two favorite songs at the moment, but they're just tied to fitness stuff, <laughs> mm. like uh, Grinders Blues from uh, Rochard, because I had my belly dance class do like this. Uh, Golden Age of Belly Dance warm up sequence to that song. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> so, nice. like, we were all doing like um, Golden Age of Belly Dance, old school belly dance to um, the tune of the Grinders Loose song, which was pretty fun. And then the other thing is probably World Revolution from Chrono Trigger because when I hear it when I'm running, when because it, it's on my running playlist, like, anytime it pops up, like, I just run faster because it's mm-hmm. like, you know, the, the Lavos end fight music. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that that that'll get yeah, you. You don't go, go for the you don't yeah. go for the magus fight. Uh, I that one sometimes, but it's a lot slower. Mm. If you want something oh, okay, yeah. to run to, you know, like you got to have a fast beat. So yeah, you want something that's gonna gonna get up there. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> gosh. So this is the, the this is really hard because most of the music that I listen to it's for background. Most of the game music that I listen to is for background noise. Um, so why don't we jump in here and say? Uh, uh, Laura's theme or whatever from Silent Hill Two, the uh, the 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 main the main song, like that Akira Yamoka channeling, um, oh gosh, Angelo Badlamante, uh, you know, in in that intro, uh, for Bless Silent you. Hill Two. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> let, let, let's just say that, like that is that is like just a a timeless song from an amazing game, and like it just brings up a whole bunch of stuff, and I would listen to it even if it wasn't associated with my favorite game of all time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh cool. So I'm just gonna read these because, you know, we don't have to we don't have to circle around uh meeting everybody. So Michael writes What is your favorite game to recharge your batteries? When you've had a tough week at work, family trouble, or whatever ailment, what is your go to digital vacation sport? As a kid, my eerie quiet of Klonoa 2's later levels, uh the eerie quiet of Klonoa 2's later levels soothed my soul. Now sadly my PS two is gone. Lately, I favor uh, finding a quiet corner of Fallout 4. 
There I dress up my corner of the apocalypse to watch the sea while listening to Golden Oldies. I like it. Yeah, so uh, for uh, me, I I've got a couple stuff, on, a couple things off the top of my head, mm-hmm. uh, which is one pinball, uh, specifically Star Wars pinball. That's just the Zen pinball program that I have. Um, I will go back to that whenever I feel like just I want to, you know, do something low effort and a ton of fun for an evening. Um, and I'm always surprised by how quickly I kind of get the get the rhythm back. Uh, and then the other thing is Hearthstone, which I, mm. I you know talk about on the show intermittently, but I. I Literally, I have not missed a daily quest for Hearthstone in probably months now. Like, I play it every single day. <laughs> and so winding down for bed or when I have a break at work or, you know, any of that stuff, that is that is my go-to game. Especially, he mentioned, you know, if like you're in a bad mood or something like that. Mm-hmm. I'll just bust out a Pirate Warrior, which is like a super aggressive, um, you know, deck that people hate right now. <laughs> because <laughs> if it draws well, it just runs people over. And if it doesn't draw well, you can still find ways to win. But it's just... It, it's one of those decks that you just feel like a dick playing. Sometimes you just want to feel like a dick, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you just go out on the ladder and and just just stomp on some people as as best as I can when I'm in a bad mood. So yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, I'll go good. I was gonna say I'll go with mine if I have friends to play with. Then something like Rocket League or like uh, another multiplayer like shooter game w- would be my like stress reliever, recharge batteries type thing. If it's just myself, usually it's something more like a app like Sudoku or like uh, Twenty Forty Eight or something like that. Yeah, those are uh, any any of those. Uh, mine might be similar. Drop Seven on the uh, on, on mm-hmm. iOS, um, which is a, a fantastic uh, numbers based kind of Tetris puzzle game kind of thing. Um, uh, failing that, like if I'm, if I want to be just like a little bit more engaged, uh, any kind of like portable JRPG where it's easy enough to optimize the system and watch the numbers work out in your favor. Um, <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. and the Vita, the Vita and 3DS are great for that. Um, Jala, how about you? Um, well, it depends if I have people to play with anything co-op, it really doesn't matter what, <laughs> just to spend time with people. Uh, if not that, then uh usually i like something that's open world like going and wandering around in morrowind or something like that you know uh where i'm just doing whatever the hell i feel like doing and just exploring and looking around and making my own quests um if not that like if i'm really tired and i just want to like lay in bed then some kind of random visual novel or maybe i'll go and play 80 days or something Mm. you know something like that 80 days is a really good answer yeah. yeah. So so that's one that I would play because that's just kind of like a chill out and just read the story and just kind of hang, you know. So. <laughs> you know, freeze to death in the Arctic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you're bold. Oh, yeah. I, I have a story about a cryotherapy tank. I, I had an experience with that on Sunday. So that's <laughs> like um, minus 200 degrees liquid nitrogen being pumped into you. To a little tank where you're naked. So <laughs> I like, I very briefly for a minute and a half experienced the Arctic. <laughs> well, I mean, was that post marathon like like recuperation stuff? Yes, I'll, or were I'll, you... I'll, I'll talk. I'll oh, okay, talk okay. Later, but anyway, yeah. Is, are we several hundred years in the future right now? And I didn't realize it. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Probably. Yeah. I am Robo Dennis. <laughs> oh, we forgot to tell you, Jala. We're all robots now. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Chase writes if you could temporarily erase one piece of media from your memory uh, so you could experience it again for the first time what would it be so not not just games but any kind of piece of media oh wow I, I, I've been thinking in terms of games that's tough well see for me I'll just give a real short and sweet answer I wouldn't because I'm not the same person as I was whenever I experienced whatever media I have a soft spot for mm-hmm. so you know, like time and place for everything, you know, like, yeah, eh, yeah. nope. Sorry. I'm tempted to say Knights of the Republic, but the graphics might not be, because the one thing is, I don't know if you experienced it as you did back then or now. Right. So right. the graphics might not be good now, and I might not have the time now to play it as many times as I did when I came out. Uh, mm. So I might go with Portal 2 or The Last of Us instead, because mm. I feel like those graphics and stories hold up. Yeah. I would say, like, I, I've, maybe these answers are four or five years out of date, but I've gone to these in the past. Either um, Mass Effect 2 
or oh that's a good one yeah or uh the entirety of breaking bad it'd be amazing mm-hmm. to watch to watch breaking bad again and feel the feel the same just kind of like in the moment breathless tension that i did you know those sunday nights between 2008 and 2013 yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i actually so this is this is good you, i i wasn't gonna say mass effect 2 before you did but I, I might piggyback on that because my um my sister just started playing it oh wow um and so my ps3 kind of kicked the bucket and stopped reading physical copies of games and so i gave all my ps3 games to her uh, and she's been working her way through like uncharted and everything like that um and she you know was texting me the night being like i've started mass effect 2 and it's so freaking amazing and i was like oh my god yeah i've i've started that game literally three or four times and have never actually finished it yeah your um, first run was uh was was uh, derailed by the burglary burglary right exactly yeah. yeah so i had i had the you know the system literally taken away from me and then i lost the disc in my garage and i found the disc in my garage yeah. starting in but i i think this yeah, is specifically and then, and then this you, is you lost I, my copy of silent Hill homecoming but that's fine go ahead <laughs> yeah, that that was stolen come on now uh, in, in the in the sequence of events that goes with the first one yeah um, um but specifically as i was texting with her about it i realized that i've you know, i've restarted the game so many times that it's ruined for me because mm-hmm. i i have all I, I i've literally played the first third of that game probably three or four times and and layered on top of that every time is like oh what did i do last last time this seems vaguely familiar oh i remember i picked this answer last time but it wasn't exactly what i meant so i'm going to pick the different answer like i keep on revising myself to where Mm -hmm. it like i can't i can't have a good experience with that game anymore because there's so much unfinished history so i would love to be able to just erase all that start from a a blank slate uh and be able to play it enjoy it because it's an amazing game Mm -hmm. um and and i know the story is as amazing as the gameplay is uh, but I've I've just like revised, uh, you know, written over that first part of it so often that I can't enjoy it anymore. So I, I yeah. would love to get rid of that one and, and come back to it fresh. Yeah. And then like uh, I want to apply just like a little bit of fuzzy logic because there are two kind of neighbors to Mass Effect 2 that mm-hmm. would be would be pretty great to go back to Blink Slate. Uh, those being um, uh, Alpha Protocol and um, oh gosh, Walking Dead season one. I feel like Alpha mm. Protocol just has like an, an infinite number of endings. That, that's that's <laughs> the thing too, right? Like every time I've played Alpha Protocol, it's gotten better because I've seen the way it articulates. <laughs> so maybe I don't need this magical memory machine to, <laughs> you know, to 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 to, to really uh, you know giddy up with that. Hmm. Huh. Uh, so let's see here. Brandon writes: Having any sauce and any five toppings of your choosing, what would be your perfect pizza? Ooh, I don't even have to blink. Um, so barbecue sauce as the base, mm-hmm. obviously. Okay. Um, uh, gr- uh, grilled chicken, jalapenos, and onions. Mm. Don't don't need to dress it up any more than that. Um, and that was like my go to throughout college, and is still specifically if I can. And I know I'm I'm gonna make some enemies here, but from Domino's. <laughs> Maybe I, you might make some enemies there. No, it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, that uh, that that is amazing. Yeah, I, I I would I would move that we keep a uh, manufacturer out of the uh, out of this, just because that might end up uh, that you know, it's like if somebody comes out, like I would just I love Adriaticos, and just like Adriaticos would be the would be the pizza I would get, but I think that might alienate a certain number of people. I think we're talking about a combination of flavors here. Sure, <laughs> I, I, I've gotten it from Papa John's. I've gotten it from any number of places, and it's still good. But but, but, but Domino's preferably. is the one that is the one that does, yeah. 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 Ben, I'm curious what, cool. you, what you're going to say. All right. I will keep the manufacturer of this pizza out of it, but my favorite pizza, uh, the ingredients are gorgonzola, fig preserves, prosciutto, parmesan, and balsamic glaze. It's pretty tasty. Oh, that, that sounds... Oh, you fancy. <laughs> that, sound, that sounds delicious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I'm pretty basic with my pizza. Um, I, I like I like some meats, so I'd love like a like a very uh, a very spicy sausage uh maybe with some um oh gosh some like roasted or uh kind of like pan fried or grilled uh garlic like i love it when there's just like dices of clove garlic in the uh, yeah. in, in the pizza uh maybe with uh you know like a like a multi cheese uh c- c- kind of thing and uh i also am a fan of onion 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 on a thing i don't need to use all five i think five might be a little bit overkill yellow or red 
or yeah. white or red. Um, I don't like yellow onions. So, uh-huh. so yeah, let's, uh, let, let's go with, uh, um, let's, let's go with, uh, like the white onion. Okay. Just, just because those, those have a, a nice, like bright, bitter flavor to them and, mm-hmm. uh, they, they, they cook up nice. I think ye- yellow onions, when they, when you cook them, they get all like limp and just come off in strings. Jala, how about you? I, I know that you're, you're vegetarian, so I'm curious what would, what would, uh. What would constitute a well, pizza vegetarian? For you? Therefore, what would no, a pizza be? Oh my no, god! No, like, no, no, not that. I'm just like, like, <laughs> like you're you're, gonna, you're, no, no, you're no. going to come no. up with like flavors that I wouldn't even think of because like I just I can just load it with sausage and be a okay. <laughs> no, no, not really. Like I I make my own pizza at home, so I will specify that I would Ooh. like my own uh, whole wheat honey flax crust that I make mm. at home, and that I probably my own roasted red pepper marinara. Although I also am partial to barbecue sauce, but I like my roasted red pepper marinara probably a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, and jalapenos, because they're like a namesake slash nickname. <laughs> <laughs> uh, red onions, probably goat cheese or feta, something like that. Like I like a, a sharp cheese, you know, yeah. a sharp taste to a cheese. I like garlic and mushrooms. I don't know. I, I pile on a, a lot of things when I make a pizza. If I, I will find a picture and I will I will put it in there so you can see mm. what a Jala pizza looks like. It's it's yeah. fucking huge and it's it's sturdy and you need a beer and you need a friend <laughs> and you need some kind of a shitty movie to watch <laughs> while while consuming this thing. So yeah. give me one second and I will show you what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, those those last so. three requirements make it way more attractive to me. Oh yeah, I mean pizza, <laughs> pizza yeah, yeah, a lot sure. of pizza is about context. I you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Then, <laughs> okay, um, here we go. Give me one second. I am I'm getting the the photo. I forgot to mention my and sauce. I, I I would I, I I like marinara, but I don't like a sweet marinara. I like a I, I like a an either tart or spicy marinara. Okay. Well, see, I, I do a roasted red pepper marinara, so and mine has uh spice to it. Hmm. So a spicy thing. So Go, yeah. go, go. Picture. Picture of pizza. <laughs> it's, it's I'm, I'm, lo- I'm looking in the backstage. Ah, oh, there we go. There, there it is. There oh, it that is. Looks, that looks very good. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's a big pizza. Ooh, yes, please. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, Sam writes, uh, did you regularly read any video game magazines back when those were more of a thing? Any titles, columns, writers, cover discs, etc. that you particularly loved or hated? Game magazines go. EGM and Game Pro. <laughs> oh, high five! Like I, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I have the same. In fact, I have every EGM and every Game Pro uh, that I've ever gotten here on a shelf beside me here. So, like uh, Game Pros from ninety ninety seven to two thousand two, and EGM from like let's say ninety nine through two thousand eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. I was uh I was way into those like Game Pro. It was just a thing. I stopped getting it once EGM was really was really a thing for me. And like EGM spawned so many great games writers and people that I still follow to this day. Um yeah, yep. people people from like one up and just they went on to do like po- like foundational podcast stuff. Like yeah, like it is it is unsurprising but still but still completely true. Uh EGM for life. Ben, what were you gonna say? Uh, I don't really have any, like, magazines necessarily, but I would say that I followed uh, game trailers, like, game reviews when they still made those, mm. and so I was disappointed to see those go. But Did game trailers get bought out by somebody? I think they just ended. Mm. I think the website is just over. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. Dennis, how about you? Yeah, I'm glad that you said EGM, because I know I subscribed to one when I was a kid and, and could not remember the name of it, but it was EGM, so yeah. thank you for that. Um, I also subscribed to Game Informer on and off for several years, it was, just because you kind of have to if you ever buy anything from GameStop. Yeah, if you ever drove past a GameStop, they would just paperboy, a, um, you know, like five copies of Game Informer into the side of your car. Exactly. Yeah. So you, you can't you can't avoid that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that that feels about right. Um, ben Kachera from Polygon is a favorite writer. I'm not sure exactly where he came from, but he lives in Cincinnati, so that makes him okay by me. Does he? I, oh, had, no, uh-huh. I had no idea that Ben Kuchera uh, lived here. I see his I see his opinion pieces a lot. Yeah, he's um, like he's like a dad of like five kids or something crazy yeah. like that, and he lives in Cincinnati, so freaking weird. personal hero right here. 
<laughs> I don't always agree with his takes, but I I like how pro- you, like you, you cannot uh, look look askance at his uh, pro- proliferation, how prolific mm-hmm. he is. Um, yes, yeah, yeah. I I just had no idea he was a he was a local boy. That's kind of crazy. Um, oh mm-hmm. gosh, uh, two more. I would always get like uh, Nintendo Power when I liked the game that was on the cover. And that was like how I experienced um, <laughs> Harvest Moon or Chrono Trigger, <laughs> you know, when I couldn't actually get those games. Um, also, EGM2 or Expert Gamer, which were just these magazines that were um, miniature uh, strategy guides and like tips and tricks kind of things. EGM also, tips and two. tricks. I've never yeah. heard of that. Yeah. EGM Square, something like that. Like it was a side publication huh. a little bit. Yeah. Um, Go figure. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Let's do let's do one more. Uh, well, one and a half more. Let's, let, let, let's do that. Sorry, because there's one down here that is not going to preserve very well, and I want to make sure that we get to it. Um, <laughs> uh, so, so uh, Jonathan writes: uh, If you suddenly had twice as much free time or no podcast-related obligations, uh, what game would you start playing right now? So oh, I think Dark Souls. I don't think I, oh yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> I have an easy answer for this too. <laughs> Uh, ben, uh, I don't think I would pick out a specific game, but I would just work through my backlog faster. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, mm. sorry, I, I feel I, like I, I, need to, I, I, I need to pull up my Steam library to look at this because I know I've had yeah. stuff um, staring me in the face. I'll say mine. I would I would play and beat Nier as soon as possible so I could be ready for Nier Automata because that weird setting and that kind of weird lead designer mixed in with Platinum seems like it is right up my alley and just the only thing that is missing is mm, literally any history with the series <laughs> <laughs> aside from playing the first two hours of near one I, so i'll tell you what this this is going to sound like a cop-out because it's a game i've played um but i would go hardcore into xcom uh and xcom 2 iron man mode mm. um because like XCOM is a fantastic game to play in that kind of roguelike every decision is saved and you like you have to hard start over if you lose um, kind of way. But each campaign is 60 plus hours long. Mm-hmm. And so just just to like grind away and get your experience and learn from your mistakes and everything requires a huge, huge time investment. Um, and so I like I love the concept. I play those games so much and I always like peter out on 30 hours either because I lose or just because like. I, I get too intimidated to make another move because I've got so much invested. Um, I think I think if I had like all the time in the world to open up, I would I would go hardcore into that. Yeah. Um, ben, I'm gonna put your feet to the fire because backlog is not the is not the right thing uh, to say. I don't think. Um, and, <laughs> okay. And the answer cannot be more more Rocket League, even though that is very much I think. <laughs> I like it. it. It is a reason. It is a reasonable enough answer. But like, is there is there a big sure. time consuming thing that you either have access to or have started playing that you would really like to just like knuckle down and and power through? I'll give this as an answer. I do not plan on playing Final Fantasy 15 because it seems like it's too long of a game and that I will not have enough time playing it. However, if I did not have the time that it takes to go to a job, then I would probably play Final Fantasy 15 if yeah. I had all the free time in the world. OK, nice. so. Yep, that works. There you go. <laughs> uh, so the final question here, Eric writes in, what names would you suggest for this little guy? 100%. Uh, we aren't 100%, but we have been calling him Little Bear. Um, and Eric, um, longtime supporter of the network, participator in the shows, um, has uh, uh, shared with us a picture of a very adorable, I don't know what kind of puppy this is. It looks like it's got a little bit of German Shepherd in it uh, a little mm-hmm. bit, but it is a, a, a very fuzzy bear like puppy um, uh, that, that is uh, kind of like fresh in from the snow. Aww. It is a cute little fluffy. I like the fluffy. <laughs> yeah. But again, yeah. it's not, it's not hard. Cause like I, I like all kinds of fluffy animals. Yeah. So. I want to, I want to flew that snoot. Um, yeah, I, I think Little Bear is good because it definitely does with its with its fur pattern. It looks like a it looks like a a, a, a bear kind of. So go go with LB uh, or why not Lyle? <laughs> you know, <laughs> why not Lyle? Why not Lyle? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's one step removed, right? 
I I've, yeah. I've seen a lot of people like, you know, use the word bear from like another language if they don't want to just call it bear, you know, mm-hmm. in English, like kuma or something, you know. So yeah, yeah. I've I've seen that as a popular way of rebranding it so it's not completely <laughs> apparent that you just called it, you know, my this is my dog bear, mm-hmm. you know. Then again, mm-hmm. I had a dog named Cat before, so <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty so good. So what do I know? Yeah. I uh so if, <laughs> if you want to go the video games route, you could go Trico, which is the the uh, animal <laughs> from Last Guardian. If you don't mind if if you uh if you don't mind naming it after a fantastic concept from a mediocre game. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently, I haven't played. I shouldn't throw shade. I, yeah, I mean, like it. everybody is every, everybody's down on that thing, and they haven't played it. I, I don't. I haven't talked to a single person who's played it. Yeah. Um. And then and then you could just go the Fallout route and call it dog meat. Hmm. Ben, I'm curious to hear what you have to say. I always like people's names, so I would go with something like Chester, maybe. Mm. Some, something dignified, yeah. Yeah, Ch- <laughs> I, 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 I like Chester that way. Like, so I think it's important for a dog to have both a both a regular name and a and a nickname. So, like Chester and then Chaz. I think I think this li- <laughs> this this little pepper right here, this fellow, he looks like a Chaz to me. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna. Bottom line, I want that dog. <laughs> it's a pretty yeah. good dog. That's a, that's a... Yeah, I no. want all of them. They are all cute. And what's funny is, like in the Slack, when everybody one person posts a picture of of their animal, everyone it's like starts a chain reaction. It's, it's like they're <laughs> playing dog like poker. Is, is what's happening? <laughs> like they're 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 trying to tr- to trump each other with their with their doggos or their cats. <laughs> yeah. Or their whatever. In my case, every <laughs> once in a while, I'll throw in my bird or my lizard just because. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you, you, you got to represent the cold bloods, you know. Do birds have cold blood? I have no idea. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. No. Okay. Oh, well. <laughs> They're basically lizards. I have no idea. Let me sun myself. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so thank you everybody for participating in this free play i'm sorry we couldn't do more uh but we have saved them uh this has been a good uh a good amount of fun uh just the right not too much but a good amount um <laughs> i'm not i'm not kidding it was way too much fun um so uh if you want to look out for more of those uh hang around on the facebook page um on tuesday afternoons either dennis or jala will post those uh which one of you was at this time Oh, that was me. Okay. Thank you, Dennis. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Remember, I, I, I didn't even know if I was going to be on. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Jala, uh, it was like a, a last half hour substitution. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know how to end the segment, so... The Grind. Now it is time for The Grind, where we talk about the things we have been playing over the past week or so. Uh, playing might be a bit of a misnomer, because Jala, you have... Uh, 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 kind of, you have a major life accomplishment behind you right now, and I'm curious to hear about that because you've been yeah. talking about training about your marathon or training for your marathon for a for, for a while now. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, it's like it's 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 a huge deal. Like not everybody can say they've done that. So I'm I'm curious how how the day went. Well, um, I first off, let me say that no, I did not die. No, I did not have an injury. Uh, so that's yeah, we're, good news. we're robots and Jala's a ghost now. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm all, I'm all good. Uh, I actually am feeling pretty good afterwards because I basically I had my cross training and my my overall training running training on point, and my pre- preparation pre and post marathon was right where it needed to be i oh yeah i have to tell you about the cryotherapy so (laughs) um after the marathon i tried cryotherapy for the first time where they put you in a tank and they put you in you know freezing freezing like put freezing air into the uh tank with you and it like lowers your body temperature and I, i don't know exactly what it is i think it's because all the blood rushes up to your core to like keep your core warm <laughs> okay you know, like you know to keep you alive or whatever oh. just like I, I don't know it does something it does yeah. something like that where um oh, so, it, so anyway, it draws your, your it limbs. draws your blood back yeah. out to the extremities so it's not enough yeah, to yeah. like induce like the frostbite response where yeah, like yeah, your, no, your, no. your like, tissue dies no, is, like or my, is it more to head off the inflammation response yeah it's it's mostly to head off the inflammation response but also it does 
get the blood flowing and things like that. Um, I followed that up with jumping into these Neato compression boots that I didn't even know existed. They are Normatec compression boots where they basically fill up with air in segments from your feet going all the way up your leg. And they do the, essentially the same thing, pushing the blood up through right, your legs right. and then releasing it back out again. And then, you know, anyway, so I was stuck in a, a freezing tank and it was great because, uh, I'm friends with a guy who owns the cryotherapy place, and he was just like, "Oh, this is gonna be good," because he was just like waiting <laughs> to see my expression, because he just wanted to see, you know, me have a reaction to being put in this freezing cold it, environment for a minute and a half, because you know he just watches everybody with you know sadistic glee, because he's a coach. <laughs> right. H- so, how how loud did you shout? Fuck. You gotta do it. shit. Come on now. You know I feel nothing. So like I had poker face, and he was like. He was just like, are you even shivering? And I'm like, yeah, I am. And he's yeah. just like, and I'm just sitting there talking to him like normal. And he, you know, he's like, you're not, your teeth aren't chattering. You are not moving around. Oh my God. And I'm like, yeah, show no fear, show no pain. You know, like, <laughs> I used to be a typo instructor. You think I want my students to know when I'm tired? Fuck no. I want them to think I can go forever, even if I'm tired, you know? So, and the same thing happened when I was at the marathon. Like I, I paced myself out and. I finished out the marathon, and when I was done with the marathon, the people in my running group were like, you look fresh, like you could still keep running. And I'm like, you know, I feel like I got hit by a truck, but I'm like, okay, sure. But, you know, like I've got my head up, and I'm looking forward, and, you know, like I'm I'm still able to go and still whatever, and, you know. So anyway, um, so the day itself, the weather was hot uh not that that's a surprise i live in the pit of hell um so (laughs) this was actually the worst weather that they have had for the houston marathon in so many years that the average finish time for this was lower than it's been since the year 2000 so for 17 fucking years (laughs) (laughs) Wow. so it was really hot really really humid and then at mile 20 it started raining so then I got soaking wet and then I got wet socks and shoes, which weighed me down and then also caused me to have blisters <laughs> because although Aww. I had put like that in all of my toes, all of that got rubbed off in the rain. <laughs> mm. So that was cute. Um, but yeah, like I, I very, when I, when I was training, I was staggering my training between mornings and afternoons. So I was training outside in the heat as well. So I was pretty, pretty, uh, you know, accustomed to it already. So I knew how to adapt to the conditions, but eight people were hospitalized and 750 needed medical attention after this. So that's a pretty big number of people who just didn't know what the hell to do and pushed too hard or couldn't finish or whatever. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, like I finished just, just to get my time out there, uh, four hours, 20 minutes and 13 seconds. Now my, original goal was to do it in like four hours and 15 minutes. So I was only about five minutes off, but a lot of people in my running group were 25 minutes to an hour and a half yeah. slower than what they're going for. And not only that, but, um, according to, you know, the science behind, you know, how temperature affects your running performance. If this had been like the average temperature that it normally is at this time of the year, mm-hmm. I would have done a sub four hour marathon. Holy shit. So like I would have chopped off like over 20 minutes off my time. (laughs) So that's, that's how drastically the temperature, you know, was, uh, you know, up there. And even the fastest people in the running group were struggling during this race. So, but I was fine. I was cool. I was just like zenning out and listening to my video game music and running along. I got tired about mile 18 and that's when I started listening to all those wonderful audio messages that I got from everybody. And they made me smile and laugh. And I actually started running, like, although I had slowed way down at that mile, um, I started to run at the same pace that I had, you know, been keeping beforehand for another two miles until I ran out of messages. <laughs> and then, <laughs> the, the, then, because I was in the middle of the rain, I ran out of messages. I got a blister and then, you know, whatever, stuff like that. Then I started slowing down again for the last several miles. But um, thanks to everybody who did stuff. The, the Probably the funniest thing that happened is that Ollie had recorded a message for me that was like, I want you to look ahead of yourself and focus on that guy in front of you's butt. (laughs) (laughs) 
I pulled out my camera and I totally took a picture because right about then I happened to be like, because there's all different kinds of people who run these things, but I happened to be behind a shirtless dude who was buff who had a nice butt. <laughs> and I was like, I'm taking a picture. <laughs> You know, yeah, I just started yeah. laughing so hard. It was great. And, ah, you good. know, I also laughed at your message, Cole. And so I was just like having a field day. And yeah. right about the time when the rain started, it was when Jeremy's message came on. So I guess he pissed <laughs> off the sky because he's the worst. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so because he's like, fucking Jeremy. Come on. <laughs> so, so, yeah, but um, it was it was a lot of fun uh, listening to all of that. And it really like it helped me keep going at least until I ran out of the messages. So either I need a lot more of those messages or I need to loop them, but they're not going to have the same impact the second time around right. <laughs> or, you know, or something. I got to find I got to find some way to, to break that. But when I hit the wall, when I get really tired, I go external and I start trying to encourage all the people who are really struggling and I'm like, come on, you can do it. Or I try to attach to people who seem to be, to be running about the pace that I'm going. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just like, okay, they don't seem like they're stopping. I've got to keep up with them. You know, like trying to, to find people, you know, find reasons in the people around me, you know? So that's like, I'm kind of like a team player. I don't, I don't, some runners, they get really mad. They get cranky and tired and i'm not i'm pretty pleasant i'm just happy mm -hmm. and i'm just like we got to do this thing together you know yeah and ever <laughs> our friendship and shit we, so. we all agree that this sucks why are we doing it <laughs> <laughs> well, here's what you need to do is is take all the the messages that you got for this race feed them into an algorithm that then randomly generates messages from uh <laughs> for you ongoing there you go so but anyway, um, so uh, because I, I don't know if I'm no, I didn't because uh, it's happened since then. Um, although you can't tell in my voice because I have that awesome poker face that extends to podcasting and my voice on podcasts. Uh, my uncle passed away in the last week uh, since the last time I was on the show. Yeah. And so my parents weren't able to go to the marathon and so I still had a friend of mine who showed up. And uh, so at mile 15, I got to go hang out with her for a second. And uh, then other than that, like the lady from the Alzheimer's Association was like going nuts when she saw me because, you know, she had met me at the um, like they had had like a pasta party, like a, a pre-marathon pasta party carb loading thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I got to meet the representative from Alzheimer's Association and talk to her. So when she saw me, the little cheer squad for Alzheimer's Association <laughs> went crazy, and that was really cool. And that was and, that was the organization that you were fundraising for, right? Correct. Yeah. And not only that, but thanks to my friends, family, coworkers, and all of Duck Feed community, uh, we raised under my bib a total of one thousand three hundred and thirty six dollars for shit. Alzheimer's Association. Nice. I when I started, I was like, if I get $500, i will be happy. Like, you know, <laughs> I don't know if I can get $500 from all these people, but like, you know, if I could raise 500, that would be great. And so I was, I was so happy to be able to raise that much money because, um, overall runners raised $42,000 for Alzheimer's association. And given the size of Houston and how many people probably were running for, you know, that, that particular organization, the fact that, you know, like over a thousand of that was from, you know, under my bib, you know, that's mm -hmm. awesome. So uh, yeah. I was really happy about that. So thanks to everybody who recorded messages or sent me, you know, messages or followed me because I got all these pings from Slack when, you know, people were messaging and talking about, Hey, does anyone know where Jala is at right now? Or Jala finished, this was her time and stuff like that. And it was really great because those things popped up on my, my, uh, heart rate monitor watch. So I got to read. I couldn't reply to them, but I could see them when I was racing. Yeah. Uh, so one of my favorite things, there were some really fun things that I saw on the road. Like this this race, like it turned out all of Houston and it was great. Like <laughs> uh, I, I have never had the experience of actually th saying, you know what, I think this would be a fun race to just go and spectate at. But fucking for real, this was a great race to go see, like just as a spectator mm -hmm. or as a runner. It's it's just a fun experience because 
all these people just flooded the streets and there were people we ran through neighborhoods in midtown and all of the people would come out on their lawns with lawn chairs and they would like hand out mints and and tissues and bananas and stuff to the runners that they bought from their own money just to give to the runners and you know there were little kids screaming we believe in you and like high-fiving everybody you know all different kinds of stuff and it was really great and then all the people, like, they would cheer for you even if they didn't know who you were. There were people holding up signs that were like, go, random stranger, go. And the <laughs> race would read off your name on your racing bib and then go, you know, call you by name. And my bib <laughs> said Jalachan. So everybody was like, go, Jalachan. And I was like, oh, I gotta man. go. <laughs> and it didn't matter if I knew them or not. They they said my name and I had to go, you know, and yeah. all the people from running group, um, like the people who came out to support them, they were cheering and going, go par, which is the, uh, you know, acronym for my running group, mm-hmm. Pearland area road runners. And so, you know, like I was like, I got to go. They said it. They, they said the thing, <laughs> you know, and I was, and they had belly dancers out there, marching bands, a bagpipe guy, singers, bands. There was this wow. dude who had a 3D Mario Brothers question block with an invincibility <laughs> star above it. And it was like, <laughs> like, oh, no. And I, I totally did. I ran, I waded through everybody, ran over there, and then <laughs> totally did the Mario jump to hit the block. You know, and I was like, punched it out of his hands. (laughs) (laughs) It broke. He was very sad. (laughs) No, I I pulled the punch, of course. But, you know, anyway, it was fun. (laughs) And so there were so many fun signs that people were holding up. Like I read all the signs and I was like people watching, you know, other runners and the people on the sides. And that was like so much fun. So some of the signs that I thought were great. You think this is hard? Imagine dating you. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Oh, <God. laughs> that was, uh, yeah. Yeah. A little and pass then, uh, Right. <laughs> if Trump could, so can you. <laughs> if, if Trump can win, so can you. Is that what you said? There was a Skype glitch. If if Trump can run, so can you. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I trained once to hold this sign. <laughs> <laughs> For the guy yeah. who had a blow up. A monkey and then it, it like and it had it holding a sign that said seems like a lot of work for a free banana uh <laughs> there was another one in my heart you were all kenyans <laughs> another one said, keep going keep going that's what she said <laughs> okay worst parade ever and then there was one <laughs> sign <laughs> My my absolute favorite was just it just said why in all caps, <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty much. But um, yeah, so at mile twenty five, I want to say, and I'm almost done talking about this, but at mile twenty five, um, I was taking a lot of walk breaks because I I did get a little bit lightheaded despite all of my preparation and the, the mm-hmm. whatever I was doing. Um, so at those times, I would just have to slow up a little bit, you know, walk a little bit, um, you know, get some water or you know. Uh, shake my head, shake it out, and then keep going. And uh, at mile 25, I'm like, I got another mile point too. Damn, you know? <laughs> and this guy came up and he just was like, come on, you can do it. And just another running guy. And yeah, I was yeah. like, what about my pace? I'm going to run with him. And I just decided I was going to run it with him. And I told him so. And he <laughs> said, this is so stupid. But he said, thank you. You know, that he said, oh, thank you. You yeah. know, that I was going to run it in with him. And then I was like, now I have to because he said thank you. I've got to do this thing. I can't stop and and you know say sorry. I'm tired and I got to slow down. No, I have to run. Yeah. You know, and so like I I ended up running it in with this random guy named Robert, <laughs> who was very sweet and nice, and he like was you know talking to me the whole way. And so in talking to somebody, it distracted me from the whole. I've got another mile point two to go. You know, and so we were able to go uh, at least until we hit downtown. And then there were so many people and they were cheering so loudly that I couldn't hear anything. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't music. I couldn't hear Robert. I couldn't hear whatever was going on. And I was just like, <laughs> my my watch told me, OK, you're at twenty six point two. And I'm like, I it, I haven't passed the twenty six mile mark. Where is the twenty six mile mark? <laughs> and I finally hit that. And then it was like. It felt like forever until that last point two was finally done. And I'm like, where is the finish line? I couldn't see it because there was <laughs> oh, like, no. and then there was a finish line. I couldn't even like, if I had seen it, then I would have probably broke into a stronger run, but I couldn't right. see it until like 
right up on it. <laughs> and <laughs> so anyway, I kind of figured that I would just be like, you know, super emotional at the end of it. My uncle passed away and I've been trying to like turn off my emotions and not think about that. And, you know, like I trained for like half a year for this thing and I did it and, you know, I did it safely and I finished in a pretty good time given the weather and everything. And oh my God. But no, I was just like, all right, so that's done. And I got my medal and I felt <laughs> nothing. And, and I got my water and my banana and I moved on and, it, you know, that's it. I, I took my finisher photos with Robert and then, uh -huh. you know, uh, gave him a hug. He kissed the top of my head and, you know, wish me well and walked off. And that was that. The oh, end. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I've been recovering. I'm drinking my beer, which is my first alcohol, as I said, in a while. And I'll probably be, you know, like tomorrow I'm going to be doing belly dance again and I'll be probably doing running or some kind of cross training, um, yeah. other cross training by the end of the week. So yeah. what's your next kind of distance event that you're, that you're going to be getting ready for? Um, well, the next big event that I'm going to be doing is going to be the Spartan Sprint. It's not a uh, very long distance. It's three to five miles. And uh, the thing about it is that it's an obstacle course race. So oh, that means yeah. there's going to be five to 30 obstacles. And I haven't been doing a whole bunch of like upper body work and I need to. So I've got like a month to get upper body work done and get, you know, a bunch of uh, power, power stuff in yeah. so I can get ready for that. Because this year I'm going to do my Spartan trifecta, which is, uh, you know, three races of differing uh, distances, increasing distances. Uh, so the next one after that will be in May, and it will be in Austin. So Ben, <laughs> ben <laughs> Spartan Super, and all the people in Austin who listen to this show, because there's so many of you guys, you can come see me or maybe see me afterwards as long as I don't die during that race. <laughs> So, can you yeah, is there any way you can like sneak in for like the last like three to five miles and run with a person or is that not allowed <laughs> i'm pretty sure that's not allowed ben <laughs> <laughs> do you really want to piss off those people who are doing a fucking doing something called the spartan yeah no. yeah, yeah that, that, that'd be the, the thing super is, the super is eight to ten miles you got time to drink <laughs> you should register somebody should do it with me because i don't yeah. i've not had somebody to like run an obstacle course race with yet so hmm. so yeah. anyway that's like the next thing i'm gonna do is that yeah so Woo -hoo. yeah so i mean that that's that's a lot of time on a on a video game podcast talk about a non-video game thing but yeah. like i'm yeah. i'm proud of you i'm proud of the people you know who yeah. came out to support you like this is an amazing accomplishment and like it is yeah. it is awesome to hear that it was like a four hour long party that the entire yeah, town was. came out for seemingly like that's that's amazing you know i just want to kind of heap that praise on you well um it, the news said that this event is the largest sporting sporting event that happens in houston more than anything else yeah so so yeah like the end like that that's it <laughs> but but by the way you know david had that time that he was talking on on the grind and he was talking about living in in the place he lives yeah. no i wasn't i wasn't giving you shit I really wasn't okay. like the, like you know he he was talking about that that's a that's a big thing in his life you're doing that but, this is big yeah that's, that's all that's all I'm doing yeah. <laughs> I just I just had to be like hey man yeah, yeah. no I I, well, just, I, I was I was absolutely not uh, like just saying like oh that was that went on longer than I thought that was that that was not my sentiment at all like it is it is a worthwhile thing to talk about because if you're angry about it uh, I don't know you go run a marathon I can't. <laughs> well, I I think I'm going to be doing this after every single running event that I do right. ever. Yeah. It's just that this one in particular is like my first time ever, ever doing something like this. And, yeah. you know, the listeners had been, you know, especially the, the people in the wellness channel have been talking to me about this for a long time. They'd been involved. People sent me audio messages. They donated to my, you know, fundraiser for this. So, you know, the community was involved with it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. So congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Now let's talk about some video games. Tell yeah, me about some yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. So, so what you been playing, Chala? <laughs> <laughs> I know you haven't been playing anything. I just thought that would be a funny thing to. <laughs> I, I I wasn't sure. I just kind of stopped, and I'm just like, <laughs> I can't face palm. I don't even know. We shorted out Chala. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but Ben, I'm curious what you've been up to. What? Uh, right. I'm going to volunteer you first. Yeah, 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 I'll talk about my go-tos. I played Darkest Dungeon. I played Rocket League, you know. 
Um, I do have something to say about Darkest Dungeon. Uh, I played that for a decent amount of time this weekend. Uh, I uh, I play I did the Darkest Dungeon level, which is like the highest level, I assume. Um, but it takes like level six characters to go through that, and I only have I think five of them, and you only can send four people per party. In my run through, I lost two of them. No. <laughs> I don't oh, think I even got halfway close to the boss battle of it. Yeah. Um, so th- that kind of discouraged me pretty heavily. Like, I don't know if I'm going to beat that game or not. Because, uh, mm. like, it's, <laughs> it's just a lot of work to get, like, another two level six characters. And, like, everyone was outfitted with a good amount of gear and everything. They didn't have any, uh, like, uh, debilitating, like, phobias or anything like that. So. Yeah. It's a little bit disheartening. So if anybody, either either you guys or people on the channel, have advice for how to do well on that last level, I'd be definitely open to it. Um, but yeah. Well, I started cool. playing Darkest Dungeon this week, so I am a fountain of wisdom, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you tried killing the enemies? Ooh, I forgot about that oh, one. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that is all the advice that I have, and I hope that it's useful to you. Um, Thanks, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, I don't know. I I might get back into it again. It's not a bad game. It's still a great game. Uh, it just discouraged me a little bit, but I don't know. Maybe, may, I don't know. So we'll see. Yeah. Um, so here's, I, I feel like this is a good place for me to piggyback on because I'm like, I, I literally did start playing it this week. That's one of my games. Um, and I think one of the most intimidating things about it for me is party comp. Like okay. I, I vaguely, you know, I, I get the idea of like, okay, the guys that have a lot of attacks, you know, that start in the front should be in the front. And the guys that have a lot of attacks that work from the back should be in the back. And, yep. you know, all that stuff. Like you probably shouldn't put your healer on the front line. Wait a minute, taking I, notes here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Attack but, enemies. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they're like every, every character, every class has these moves that will either – mark targets or move them in the comp of the party and i have to imagine that like the the highest functioning party that actually would be able to take on the darkest dungeon um really leans heavy on shuffling people around in the order uh, from like the one spot to the four spot and and leans heavy on the abilities that push them back and forth and synergies there i just Mm -hmm. have no handle on the game yet to understand that. And that, I think that that is the single thing that feels the most un- overwhelming to me is, is playing around with the movement techniques at all. Like I, I, I have stuck exclusively to characters that stay in the place I put them. Damn it. Um, so, far <laughs> from so I guess my question to you is, are you of that philosophy? Like do you kind of have your front row player and your back row player and they kind of stay in that or has your party comp evolved to involve a lot of moving around? So, yeah, I think my ideal party is a uh, Crusader in the front, Highwayman in the second position, uh, a Cultist in the third position, and then a Crossbow person or a Dog person or kind of variable in the fourth position. Wait um, a minute, I heard Dog person. Yeah, is, that's a what? Is, 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 hound, is, the hound master. Uh, oh, so so it's not a oh. dog that walks like a man. It is, no, it is a man. It's a walk. dude with a dog. Okay. You get dog treats, makes your dog attack more, you know, that sort of <laughs> stuff. Um, but the the main component, of the the only thing that moves around a lot for me is the uh, the highwayman, the guy in the second position. Uh, mm-hmm. There's two moves that I think are important for him. One is a lunging move, which moves him forward a position and attacks any of the four people in the enemy party. And then mm-hmm. the next move that he has is a point blank shot, which does heavy damage and sends him back a position, back to the second mm-hmm. place position. And so the first move that lunges him forward also activates what's called like a repose. So yeah. uh, if someone attacks him, he'll attack them back. So I kind of rely on that. So I I hope that people attack him so that it deals damage to them. And then my third player, the occultist, will heal him. Um, if he needs it, otherwise he'll attack the other team. And I kind mm-hmm. of rest on that kind of synergy. Um, gotcha. the crusaders just there to do damage. Um, if you could replace him maybe with someone else, if there's someone else that was better. And then likewise, the person in the back could also just do damage. It, it doesn't matter as much. Um, uh, but there are some weird synergies like the, uh, third place position, 
position, the occultist also has an ability to mark people. And then if you have the crossbow person with that, one of their attacks will do, I think, one and a half to two times damage against marked people. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, so I try and like get those sorts of synergies going. But then again, the knight really doesn't do a whole lot with that. He's just there to either take damage or attack other people. So yeah, uh, I guess makes sense. I guess the knight also does have a heal ability, so he can kind of be used in a pinch to heal somebody if he needs to. And then also the uh, person with the crossbow also has a heal ability too that similarly can be used if, if you get in a bind. But Yeah, I, I just, I imagine, like I said, the kind of party comp that would make it its way through the darkest dungeon to like shovel around like a Rubik's Cube. In, in, yeah, in awesome. the battle. like that's that's I, I like I'm not there yet. I I have no concept of how to make that work. I just looking at the game and and just that that being so integral to the combat. I have to imagine anything that's that you know can win the game would yeah. would operate in an incredibly complex way like that. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think the Highwayman's, like, the way to go in terms of, like, yeah, there's no downside for him, I think. Because, like, the worst-case scenario, if your party gets, like, shuffled, which can happen from time to time, he can mm-hmm. just lunge his way up to the first position if he needs to, and then he gets back to the place that he needs to be, like, without, you know, penalizing you for using, like, a movement as an action. So, yeah, I think like, he's... I, I know... yeah. The jester class, and I think David had complained about being really struggling to find a use for the jester. Yeah, um, it, that has a lot of movement in it, and like I okay. look at it and go, okay, that sounds impossible to navigate, but I bet that's integral to winning. <laughs> like it's it just yeah. seems like that kind of game to me. Yeah, I know the grave robber also has a lot of movement based moves, or at least two movement based moves, but I haven't used her as much, so I don't know. Yeah. I'm sure this makes me want to. I think after this podcast, I'll probably look up in articles to see like if there's any recommended combos that are like optimal or any yeah. synergies like that. Um, I um I broke down almost right away and started going to a wiki for for more basic things. I haven't I haven't looked specifically for what I'm describing now, but okay. um that's it, it. It definitely seems like a game that lends itself well to a wiki. Yeah, uh, with I my did. limited time with it. <laughs> It is pretty cool, like how deep the strategy is, though, from pretty simple components of just mm-hmm. classes and four positions and different moves. But yeah, yeah. Oh, so, uh, speaking of simple components, my God, I, I I feel compelled to mention just the art style is like the definition of doing a lot with a little. Like mm-hmm. at its heart, uh, the I'm curious oh, about that because it's very elaborate. <laughs> well, mm-hmm. it, mm, the like, are you are you talking about the of, like? The animations or things yeah, like that's that. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, is it, is it is it style simplicity or animation simplicity? That's there. Yeah, the, you're you're finding the nuance. Yeah, the animation simplicity, I guess. Like, the the way you know, fundamentally, the the characters don't do a lot of moving. Like, they're not yeah intricately there's a, animated. There's oh, a picture ahead. of them static. There's a picture of them attacking. And there's a picture of them being attacked. And yeah. that's true of yes. like any three char- any characters. Yeah. yeah. And if they do anything or, in between, learned... it is break like a puppet and it's tweened. Yeah. Um, it, or I, I learned attacking themselves, which can happen <laughs> if Ooh. you if you if if one of your people should happen to become a masochist, um, <laughs> which is it was kind of funny. Like the, it was just a, a frame of my guy headbutting his sword. So that happened. <laughs> <laughs> um but but everything else they do they like they achieve a really really cohesive like you never notice that there aren't that many frames that the characters go through because it it, it fleshes it all out with like camera zooms and bringing stuff to the foreground and highlighting sound effects are really good too times. sound effects are great like it it is so yeah so the style is is masterfully done the animation is very simple but also combined with kind of the way the camera draws your attention to certain places or the way certain items are brought into the foreground during attacks um, that makes you feel like you're seeing a really cool moment in time from the fight um, as it plays out uh, and, and kind of distracts you from the fact that there's there's not a ton of inc- intricate animation going on. And I, I, I like really appreciated that. And I um please don't take it as any kind of slight me saying like, Oh, there's not a ton of animation going on. They just were incredibly economical with what they chose to do. It, uh, yeah. I mean, that speaks to any work, <laughs> any visual works mm-hmm. credit, which is, Oh, they, they accomplish more with less and also leaning on key, key poses as opposed to like lovingly animating every single strand of hair. 
Uh, mm-hmm. It is, it is, uh, I mean, not, I, I'm going to say it's a harder thing to do. Obviously the technical side of things are like, are more difficult if you're trying to get that granular, but, mm-hmm. um, but no, like making those tough choices and working within the, within those limitations. Uh, it's a good thing. Yeah. Thank you, motorcycle, for uh, <laughs> Sorry. underlining. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> I rushed for the mute button. Flipping you off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I will say, just to round out our, our Darkest Dungeon chat, I, I thought it was very interesting. In XCOM, I've had countless soldiers die, um, but I've never actually abandoned a mission. Like, I've always seen things through until everyone was dead or I accomplished my objective. Whereas Darkest Dungeon, I totally had a moment where I freaked out and abandoned a mission. Mm. Did, you got to get that I, loot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think it was the right decision because, like, I, I kind of – I was clearly about to lose a battle, so I ran away and it just put me outside the door. My my requirement to to complete the quest I was on was to finish every battle. But I was just out of healing supplies. All my people were, like, on death's door. And I knew to try to jump back in and finish that fight from the beginning because I had quit it um, was suicide. And so I have been the mission and saved my guys. And I, I have not had anyone die yet in Darkest Dungeon, which I'm sure oh. will change. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's a very interesting contrast from XCOM what I'm putting the priority on. So uh, later in the game, I this I, I don't think this is too much of a spoiler. Um Later, there's like difficult missions will come your way. Where <laughs> wait you... a minute, wait a minute. The more you play well, the game, the harder well, it gets. Yeah. All right. All okay, right. That's not the spoiler. Um, <laughs> but where the cost of retreating is that it will randomly kill one of your people. So, for example, doing the darkest dungeon, uh, one of my people died, and so I had three people left, and so I had the choice of can I see this through with three people? Which, no, you can't, because it's such a huge disadvantage <laughs> by that point. So you have to retreat knowing that another person's going to die because you're retreating. And so that's like an added like salt in the wound of that decision. But, uh, yeah, it's painful. I have, I have yet to see a game um, do it well where you can lose a party member and not just have it be catastrophic. Um, cause XCOM is very similar where, especially before you upgrade your party size, losing one character is losing 25% of your party. And it just, you know, it, everything goes to hell in a handbasket unless you've got things so wrapped up that it was a complete fluke that the first guy died in the first place. So I, I'd be very interested to see, I, the way I'm thinking about it, the game would almost have to scale the difficulty with the number of people in your party and be like, Hey, you can keep going. Um, and we'll keep the level of difficulty the same as it was before, just scaled for three party members. Uh, so you might lose another person organically, um, or you can guarantee you'd lose another person by retreating, but save the other two. Like that, that's mm. uh, I, I haven't, I'll, I haven't seen that done well anywhere. I'll counter with a battlefront. Like you can lose a person in the battle and it doesn't really change things too much. Hmm. Battlefront. The Star Wars game. Yeah. Oh, where it's like oh, sure. 200 okay. people versus 200 people. Yeah. And- <laughs> well, okay. I mean, that's a proportion. <laughs> yeah. in, the, yeah. in the terms, in terms of like a, a turn-based strategy game. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Huh. You play anything else, Ben? I did. Um, are we? Are we all wrapped up with Darkest Dungeon? Are we ready to yeah, abandon that, that- our conversation about that? <laughs> <laughs> Abort conversation. Um, yeah. No. Does somebody I, 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 die? I, <laughs> uh, no, this isn't a hard conversation. We'll just get you know mental problems. Oh, I am but, so sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I you lost me. I was blowing out a candle. So oh, no. <laughs> we're about to blow out your candle. Oh, geez. <laughs> anyway, the other game that I've been playing this week uh, has been Doom, which I mentioned last week. Yeah, you were kind of lukewarm on it last week. I was. Uh, I think I started to figure out some of the mechanics of the game. Got more into it. Um, I still think it's a good game, not a great game, but it, it's still pretty fun. Um, the graphics are still great. It's It does have a good sense of humor about itself. It's not a game that takes itself seriously. Um, so that's fun. Like it just, It's just there to have a good time. You just shoot, shoot guns at demons until they stop coming. Hmm. So that's kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, the like the upgrade system and like the like the meta game is like just okay. It gets a little bit old after a while. There's like uh, 
it's like uh, the the main upgrade components is you can upgrade your suit, you can upgrade uh, your weapons, and there's like one other thing you can upgrade, but I forget what. I think it's like the power for uh, your health and your shield and uh, something else I can't remember. Um, oh, your ammo. Uh, so like the upgrade mechanics are just okay, but there's a few flaws in them. Like I think the suit upgrades, like there's like maybe – uh, five different things you can upgrade at any given time. And so you're going to pick the ones that you want to do the most. And so then as it goes on, you're upgrading things that you care less and less about. So that's kind of like a game design flaw, perhaps. Um, the gun mechanics are okay. Uh, th- they, I think they avoided the problem with the gun mechanics. It's like higher cost for each tier, but it's like a tiered system of unlock. So it gets more and more powerful as you go. Um, and then they have an interesting achievement for, uh, their gun upgrades where when you upgrade a gun almost fully or like uh, with all your like upgrade tokens or whatever, um, it'll give you some sort of challenge that you have to complete in the game. Like it'll be like get 50 headshot uh, headshots with the scope that you just received. Hmm. Uh, and, and then once you do that, then it'll unlock a final perk for the game or for the gun. And it'll be completely upgraded. And it'll be like, well, let's do double damage or something like that. So I thought that was a pretty cool mechanic for like upgrading the gun feature. It's not, you know, it's, not anything too revolutionary, but it's just like an added kind of fun perk that uh, kind of goes in the back of your mind while you're playing the game where it's like, okay, not only do I need to destroy this wave of demons, but if I do this, this, and this, I can upgrade these things as I'm doing it. So like, yeah. there's, there's kind of an interesting meta game there. Um, well, like again, giving yourself micro missions, like things to keep in your, things to keep in your mind to vary up your tactics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's a fun game. It's, uh, again, I would not say that it's, like, a revolutionary game. It's not a great game, but it's not a bad game. Like, yeah. definitely if you pay, like, 20 to 40 bucks for this game, I think it's well worth it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Man, I ordered that game on the 28th of December when it was on sale on Amazon. Uh-huh. Still has not shipped. Do you, <laughs> wow. do you not have Amazon Prime? <laughs> I've, got, I've got Amazon Prime. I think that it's just out of stock and has been. I think that they uh, they bit off more than they could chew. Oh wow! Yeah, it says it says right now. Like if I if I was going to try to order Doom for PS4, uh, which is all I really feel comfortable playing it on uh, for system spec reasons, uh, it says it will be in stock on January the twenty first. Now on my order status page, uh, they might do well to tell me that. <laughs> i don't know yeah, no i'm not a I, I'm, I'm not a a store scientist or anything but uh yeah it, i don't know it's a fun game to bluff trust me i'm a store scientist <laughs> oh well i mean it's it, it sounds like you've you've not not come around on it but you've found found something that has a little bit of a little little bit of meat for you yeah, and I I don't think it's a game that really overstays its welcome or anything too. I I think it's yeah. I, I'm not done with it, but you know I think it's probably like a eight to twelve hour game. Yeah, I think. Um, so yeah, I I think it's good. Um, uh, Dennis, how about you? Yeah, so you heard about Darkest Dungeon. Um, for my other game, I want to talk about. I'm going to do a bit of a rewind because I want to talk about Bloodborne again. <laughs> Oh wow! You finished that a while ago. You you beat all of <laughs> Dark Souls three in the meantime, right? Uh, I beat most of Dark Souls. 3. Oh right, right. Sorry, sorry. So Bloodborne, you went back. But yeah, damn son. I uh, well, I went back to the Bonfireside chat episodes and had some freaking realizations, man. That I I just I need to. <laughs> oh, talk. <laughs> there there was content you <laughs> so, didn't do. <laughs> there well, first off, there's a shit ton of content I didn't do. I missed all of Castle Canehurst. Basically, if it's optional, oh, I missed it. Yeah. Oh, so no, um, no Nightmare Frontier, no Castle Canehurst. Exactly, uh, right. and no First Floor School of Mensis either. Oh shit. Um, which made it that much crazier when I went to the second floor. I was like, where the hell am I? <laughs> yeah. Um. So I actually, though, upon reflection, you know, and, and realizing I missed a ton of content and a ton of exposition, um. I, I don't mind that. I actually really like the experience I had with the game. Um, you know, missed content and misinterpretations and all. Right. Um, cause the other, the other thing that was just blowing my mind and I was posting in the, in the bonfire side chat, uh, Slack channel about this earlier today is I, for some reason thought, um, that, that you could get back to the original version of the Hypogean jail. 
no, um, no, after no. unlocking like the crazy occultist version of it. Yeah, I mean, like um, you you get to the crazy occultist version after the moon changes phase, and that is like a uh, it like that is a constant thing in a playthrough. Yeah, so in a feeble attempt for anyone who hasn't played the game, which let's be honest, probably ninety percent of the people listening have. I mean, aside from um, the other two hosts on the show, so yeah, well, <laughs> I'll <over>. get there. <laughs> They're not listening. Um, <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> um, nice. So uh, they basically, you know, the the game, yeah, kind of is is demarcated by these moon phases, um, and when things advance, you know, the world gets progressively more crazy. Um, for some reason, I read it as okay. There's like the normal world version, and then the the next moon phase version, which is really just forward in time, mm -hmm. um, was a pocket dimension, and that that right. that's something that exists in this game. Like that's not that's not out of context. The, the, the nightmares and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um. It, yeah. Exactly. Uh. And 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 so I like was you know freaking out and, and realizing or thought I realized that the little glowy messages on the ground that aren't like connected to anything else um, were consistent between these quote unquote dimensions. Mm -hmm. And I, I, again, I, for some reason I had in my head that you could get to both versions and I, I absolutely love the idea. And this is like, this is going to have to show up as like a short story or something since this isn't <laughs> how it actually is. But the idea that you could get to different dimensions uh, or different dimensional versions of a place simply by going there different ways. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, if I warp into this place at the bon you know, at, at the lantern or the bonfire, yeah. it's one way. But if I actually walk down the path to get there, it's another way. Um, yeah. and that, that was just like hyper, hyper intriguing to me. Mm -hmm. Um, but then, um, also realizing how much content I missed in, in, you know, the, the yeah, second half of that game. Kane, Kane Hurst is, is, is the best. Um, Kane Hurst. Yeah. From, from what I listened, it is, um, although the, the nightmare of Mensis and the, the first floor of the school, um, I, I miss those, I realize, because at that point in the game, like from from uh, the Unseen Village on, I was just like running and blubbering like a fool through that yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. It's uh... <laughs> like it, it became it became just one sprint. Like I because I, enemies <laughs> started respawning when I killed them. And so I was like, fuck that. I'm not you know killing anyone anymore. I'm just going to run past you. <laughs> um, and then and then the way that I encountered it, since I hadn't done the nightmare of Mensis, which is, which has to do with like teleporting to a new place and all that. Or the, the nightmare frontier, oh. like nightmare of Mensis oh, sorry, is, yeah, yeah. Sorry. is story, yeah. is story mandatory. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, sorry. The nightmare frontier. You're right. Um, since I hadn't seen the nightmare frontier, I had no context for like being teleported to a new place and certainly not going through a door. Mm -hmm. So since I had no context for the school, I was running through that, like, Oh my God, this is crazy. I just got warped to this random place. Uh, and then I open a door in that and it's like literally the void that I step into. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, why the hell not? Sure. Like it, it was just this great gameplay articulation of losing my mind. Um, <laughs> And so, so, you know, I'm intrigued. I love the game. So I could totally see myself going back to see all the content that I missed, yeah. but I'm, I'm kind of not mad that I missed it on my first time around because, <laughs> um, the experience that I got felt so complete in its own yeah. way. So did you have yeah. to start a new game to, 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 to go after this stuff? Uh, I, I do. Yeah. So I, I started a new game plus, but I have not done anything in it. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, that would be the base off of which I go and, and check out Castle yeah, Kingers yeah. stuff. Yeah, go for it. Um, I forget. So the PS4 that you got, did David get the, uh, the old Hunters DLC or was that after no, his? No, I, yeah. I don't, I don't have that either. So that, that is other content I could go and get. Yeah. Old Hunters is amazing. It is, it is better than even the best stuff in Bloodborne is and Bloodborne oh, wow. is that's, really, that's really price. good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so all that, all that, I know we've got an entire podcast dedicated to these games. No, I'm, I'm um, curious. But, I'm curious for, for, for your perspective on that because we get, you know, we're, we're kind of, we're kind of in a bubble over there. Sure. I, I love, um, the game is so conducive to kind of stories that you tell yourself about what's going on. Cause I, like, I totally had this read on like, oh, okay, I get it. I'm kind of slipping between these dimensions and, you know, maybe the, these messages are consistent between the dimensions. So that sent me on like a theorizing treasure hunt mm -hmm. every time I saw a message now. And like, so I just, I just had this very, you know, exotic, yeah. intriguing world built up in my mind. And even though that did not wind up, 
you know, holding together with what kind of people who have studied the game more closely have concluded um, that it was satisfying to kind of build that story for myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm also glad that kind of what's replacing it is equally as satisfying. So, yeah. um, And and, and that that whole idea of the same place, but uh, arrived at in a different way, possibly at a different time surfaces in Dark Souls 3 as well, if you continue that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that, that's the only note I have for Dark Souls 3, which I'm continuing to play, and I'm starting to get a lot of deja vu, both from the first game and from areas earlier in the game. Like, every, everything is wrapping around in on itself right now Yep. Um, in, in a very interesting way. So, yeah, um, yeah that's, that's a lot of fun. I am, I am, you know, still enjoying Dark Souls 3 um, and now have a whole bunch of extra fuel to, once I finish it, go back and check out some stuff in Bloodborne again. Yeah, do it. <laughs> Bloodborne's great. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm not going to keep us here for too much longer just because I've been, uh, you know, we're, we are in the process of rolling up a new show and a couple of other shows are starting up new seasons. So there's been a bunch of uh, just a bunch of uh, homework to do. Um, mm-hmm. So one thing that's related to some of that homework, uh, Hyper Light Drifter um, is a game that I initially was very, very like gung ho about. We're covering it for the Bonfire Side Chat off season. Uh, I just want to mm-hmm. tell people uh, who are who are listening to this. Uh, recently they added an easy mode, uh, specifically it's called newcomer mode. Um, and boy, oh boy, is that the way to play that game? Because otherwise it is too difficult to play. Um, (laughs) and, uh, like (laughs) this is going to sound like a, uh, this is going to sound like a parody, but, uh, over on game uh, a a user named 100% deplorable, uh, with an anime avatar. So fuck you. Uh, says the game ain't that hard. Come on. No, fuck you. Um, and on the steam forums, uh, somebody says, uh, th- this Wait, is, this is, uh, to find these people? I just, I did, I did a search for the, uh, for, for, for the hyper light drifter easy mode. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Bomi or sorry, no, uh, uh, mini white dragon, uh, white, I assume for white natural, white nationalist, um, uh, on the steam forum says, shut up with easy modes and get good scrubs. Follow dark souls logic. <laughs> no, fuck you. In fact, go fuck yourself. Uh, sit, on, sit on a goddamn fire hydrant. You waste of human space. Um, <laughs> <laughs> get good bro get Ooh, good jesus christ it makes me so angry <laughs> that i have attached myself to this thing that it ugh, ugh. you know um, as a low effort new podcast that you could add to the network we can just go find the dregs of the internet read a quote <laughs> from them that's from twitter or a comment form and then just all chorus like fuck you no. fuck you you asshole fuck you for about yeah. you know a minute or so no, um, yes, this the, the, this game is pretty hard and difficulty is subjective, um, but also let's stop and consider. Also, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, so 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 there's that. Like Hyper Light Drifter is a is a beautiful game. There are some things to recommend it. We're going to talk about it a lot here in a couple weeks on on that other show. But if you're going to be diving into it, play it on easy. Like it just gives you a little bit more health and increases health drops. Um, so like uh, the same advice for FTL. Yeah, pretty much. Like, just play it. Like, that's like, like the easy mode on FTL is good and fine. Um, <laughs> the other thing, so I just want to um, uh, weigh out on this real quick because I don't feel like I gave Super Mario Run enough of a shot. So, when we initially. Initi- like a paywall five minutes in? No, no, I, I I bought it straight away. Like, I figured, uh, oh, okay. uh, yeah, like a, a Nintendo game on iOS was going to be worth ten dollars so that was that was fine uh when i initially talked about it on the show i just said things that were not true um so even though there are only like 24 different levels um and if you are just trying to get through those levels without dying and just kind of navigating the obstacles that is uh that you know like it, it will be a very quick experience i went back to it thinking hey there has to be more here and then i got hipped to the new coins which are uh so each level has like hey you beat this level and you move on to the next one but also there are there are pink purple and black coins and after mm-hmm. you gather up all the pink coins uh then all of a sudden hey here are these new purple coins to get and then here are the black coins and each of those are placed on different lines in these levels and searching for these searching for these things um finding them and then executing the moves in the auto scroll to like get them means that like this game gets infinitely more complex and interesting as you decide to start going after them what do you get for getting all the coins i don't know the satisfaction 
(laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I mean, just like it it just, it it is, it's just a bunch of new stuff for you to do. Like it does change the way that the, that the levels feel as you start like paying more close attention and start using kind of like the weird little like nuanced moves that Mario has um, to kind of like execute these little things that they like designed around these weird edge cases for. So like if you're just engaging with it on the surface and blow on the surface and blowing through it, you're going to blow through it quickly. But like, I've been just like banging my head against some of these challenge coins and it is, it is harder than a lot of Mario content that I've played in a while. So, huh. so yeah, I, I think that my, my like lukewarm estimation of this thing has, has shifted over to like, Oh, this is like, this is cool and interesting in a, in a way that I didn't initially give it credit for. Like in the words of ZZ Top, it's got legs. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I think you mean it's got legs. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That, that is exactly what I meant. Thank you. Both of you said it better than I ever could. Uh, so uh, that, that that's it. Any questions about either of those? Oh, good stuff. I'm I'm glad you enjoyed it more than you thought you would. Yeah. I just it's it's so easy when you're like trying to kill time waiting for the elevator. You know, it's like, hey, I just I, I want to dip back into that and give it more of a shot and then to uncover a whole different a whole different thing that if I was paying more attention on the initial go through, like trying to find as much new stuff as possible, you would think that I would have encountered that other thing. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Ben, you were going to say something? Nope. Okie doke. <laughs> uh, so do you all want to button it up? Buttons. Yeah. Okie doke. I've been saying okie doke a lot lately. I uh, don't know why, but thank you so much for listening <laughs> to level number 181. Uh, so grateful to you for sticking around and listening to this and telling friends and all the stuff that you do, uh, responding to the uh, the multiplayer or putting in your free play multiplayer questions. Uh, it's it, it's also great. So I mentioned during the grind that I've been very busy preparing for preparing for a new show and just a bunch of other stuff has been kind of in in development and things like that. And I was talking with somebody at work and just kind of reflecting here recently as I think about the plan for the year. How crazy is is it that we just a decided to talk about the stuff and people were like cool with listening to it and supporting us and b like we can just decide, hey, this is something that we're passionate about doing and people are going to be there to, you know, to to respond to us and listen and give us their time and help, you know, and help us out as we, you know, pursue these new things like, hey, um, Stephen King books and the collected works of REM. Like, that's kind of crazy to start talking about, but we can do it because people want to hear it and people want to hear us mm-hmm. do it like collectively across the network. This is this is nuts. And I don't <laughs> want to let it go unsaid how how grateful I am. And, you know, I'll, I'll speak for other people how grateful we are that it's uh, that, that, that it's kind of a possibility. Yeah, it's especially yeah, cool that the people listening to it are good people as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i i don't know what we did <laughs> yeah don't know what we did to you worked that. hard for a number you worked hard for a number of years creating a quality series of podcasts you really want me to go into all no this? no on. it's a, I, I, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll remain incredulous i don't i like even even hearing reason, reasonable answers makes me makes it sound like i'm like exulting in it but no i just want to like say to take a moment to say that especially as we get ready to launch the new show um, I don't know. It is a, it, it is a good thing. And well, n- never thought that we'd be in a position to do that. But if you want to help this show grow, um, and other shows on the network, uh, iTunes is a great place to go and leave, leave some words or ratings or stars. Give us your stars if you have them. Um, <laughs> and, uh, your pink and, ones and your purple ones. Yeah. And- yeah. And, and the black <laughs> ones, maybe. Um, yeah so send us all your copies of David Bowie's black star. It's a good album. Um, <laughs> so um but other than that uh just stick around uh come around next time we're gonna be here and uh uh we'd, we'd love to have you is there anything that i'm missing i don't think so this podcast is starting to sound like a prairie home companion now maybe i don't know <laughs> <laughs> uh so i've been cole ross at cole ross on twitter i've been dennis furia at d furia on twitter 
I'm always Jalachan in places including the marathon. <laughs> <laughs> ben Ben Merkel at Merkelizer on Twitter. And stick around for some titles. Okie dokie, who has titles they want to throw in? I only have five. Oh, only five. Wow. Only five. Okay. <laughs> Grand Theft Mario. Okay. <laughs> Pander to my prejudices. <laughs> Sometimes you just want to feel like a dick. <laughs> I know that's not going to be one, but still, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> I just had to say it. Trust me, I'm a store scientist. <laughs> and it's a got legs. <laughs> nice. Uh, st- stylized with an exclamation mark, obviously. Of course. Okay. Uh, Dennis, how about you? Yeah, so I have pizza is about context. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, why not Lyle? <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then I also had uh, two repeats from Jala. Trust me, I'm a store scientist, and it's a got legs. Okay. Uh, ben, how about you? All right. I have some crossover. I had just pizza context as a condensed version. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. I also had why not Lyle. <laughs> okay. Because why not? Yeah, well... And uh, <laughs> I also had uh, every sneeze is an emergency. Every <laughs> sneeze, every sneeze My... is an emergency? Mm-hmm. That might have been off air. Um, and uh, then the last one I got is, at best, it's Brink. Ooh, that is such a chilly <laughs> burn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow, I don't actually have any uh, any crossover with you guys. So I have, um, oh, wow. I, I have pony water. <laughs> <laughs> um, a language you could hate. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is uh, related to uh, uh, pander to my prejudices and mm-hmm. magical memory machine. Huh. Hmm. So we have we have four that had uh, that had double double submissions or double votes here. Uh, trust me, I'm a store scientist. It's a got legs. <laughs> um, uh, pizza is about context, and why not Lyle? So if we choose why not Lyle, I feel like we can basically force Eric to name his dog Lyle. <laughs> <laughs> well, <it> just, <laughs> no, I, the best I, part I, about it is that of of those, when you said that one, I just started like giggling to myself. So <laughs> why not Lyle? <laughs> that, See, I don't know. Maybe it was the beer, but it makes me very happy. <laughs> I mean, the rationale is in the name. Yeah, why, why not, not Lyle? Lyle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so why not Lyle is good, but I want Eric to know that even though we we uh, that we, we were making this the title, why not Lyle? Um, we decided that he should call his 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 little bear uh, either Chaz or Chester, or if you want to get saucy with it, Champ. I, I think Champ would also be a good a good a good nickname for that for that majestic animal. Uh, any, Ch- any Chester good dog has has three names. We we all know that. Yeah, yeah. So so there's the regular name, which is Chester. Um, there's there, there, there's Chaz, which is the colloquial, and when he's been an especially good dog, which let's admit it, always he's Champ. Okay, <laughs> I just I just want to make sure that he he knows that because why not Lyle is a good. <laughs> oh, let's go for it. <laughs> I want him to name it Why Not Lyle as a sentence. I want that to be the name of the dog now. Mm, I wouldn't do that to that pupper. Yeah, no, I think think that he... he, he He deserves Chester. Yeah, yeah, a dog has dignity as opposed to this this part that we we participate in. (laughs) (laughs) This this, uh, shared dalliance. So yes, Why Not Lyle it is. All right. (laughs) Yeah.